Cocktail Cup and on the strength of back-to-back -back wins at Talladega and Charlotte, Jeff Gordon holds a 68-point lead over Jimmy Johnson. How about the Cinderella story of the season? Clint Moy just 10 points back, more in third position. The big gainers last week, Kyle Busch and Jeff Burton finishing third and fourth at Charlotte, each gaining two spots in the chase. Take a look at the far right of your screen. Five chasers today are starting 20th or worse, including two-time Martinsville winner Tony Stewart way back in 34th position. Now, which driver from today's field of the best uh, record here at Martinsville? To no one's surprise, it is Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson who have combined for 10 wins. Folks, the other 41 drivers total have combined for just 10 wins, so the Hendrick guys are awfully, awfully good. Hello, everyone. Along with the champs, Rusty Wallace, Andy Petrie, I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. I want to just a gorgeous day for racing here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Now, Rusty, as a seven-time cup winner here, you could teach us class on how to be successful at this racetrack. From a driver's perspective, you know, what are the key do's and don'ts at Martinsville? Jerry, the main thing you need to do is not tear the brakes up. you got to manage these brakes all day long, because if you don't, you're going to have a problem. The other thing, be patient. Be a patient under behind the wheel of the car and go when you got to go, not all the time. And one thing you don't want to do is tear the front fenders up in a car because if you do that, being too aggressive out there, it's really going to kill the handling. And another thing, when you make a pit stop, don't get your car in the pits where you can't get it out. If you get stuck in the pits, that's going to lose a lot of time right there. Andy, you've won here with two different drivers, Harry Gann and Dale Earnhardt Sr. How do you keep your drivers from losing their brakes and their cool over the course of 500 laps here? Well, it's a definite hard thing to do here. This little racetrack can really bring out the worst in guys' tempers. And the way to do that, to, to do both, is to talk to that driver all the time. They're going to really wear the radio out. Talk to Mike Ford down there, crew chief for Denny Hamlin, starting 30th. I said, how are you going to keep him out of trouble today and get him up there? He said, I'm going to wear out the radio. I'm going to talk to him every lap. Folks, this racetrack's about the size of your average shopping mall parking lot. Now, imagine putting 43 cars in a mall parking lot. Tell these guys you can go just over 100 miles an hour, but at the end of the day, there's only going to be one parking spot available that you really want. How quickly would that get ugly, folks? Our shopping mall lot, we call Martinsville Speedway, is about to be open for business. This should be fun to watch. ESPN's coverage of NASCAR Nextel Cup Series on ABC, the Subway 500. Brought to you by Subway. Subway. Subs that are full flavored and delicious. Subway restaurants satisfy the craving. Subway, eat fresh. Shell, made to move. The Ford F-150, built Ford tough. And Coca-Cola, thanks for drinking. Words in motorsports. Today's Grand Marshal representing Subway, Jared Fogle. Hi there, I'm Jared Fogle on behalf of all the Subway franchisees in North America. Welcome to this year's Subway 500 here in Martinsville, Virginia. Gentlemen, start your engines! Engines have fired. 43 of NASCAR's finest uh, are excited about getting this party started on uh, a track that has been known for decades as being the smallest, tightest, and arguably toughest to, to uh, drive for 500 laps historic Martinsville Speedway. Take a look at our starting grid points leader, Jeff Gordon, will lead him down his seventh pole of 2007, 63rd of his career, flanked by chase contender Martin Truex, who equals his career best start of second here today. Now, while you watch to see where your favorite driver will start, Let's visit with our in-race reporter, driver of the car number 99, the Office Depot Ford, Carl Edwards, starting back in 20th position. Hey, Carl, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Clear, Rusty, how's it going? Pretty good, buddy. Hey, Carl, you, you're fifth in the points, and you still got a shot to win this championship. But, man, you're starting 20th. So, Carl, when practice was all over last night, uh, how was the car, man? You got it where you want it? I think so. We finished practice fourth on the sheet, which is the best I've ever done here at, at Martinsville. We've got... Uh, Great Office Depot Fusion. We've got the City of Hope fire suit and helmet. We'll be auctioning off for them. Uh, I know you've got a lot more success here today, so if you could just if you see me do anything wrong, you help me out, Rusty. Yeah, I might need it. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, you're pretty doggone good. I don't think you need any help. Hey, Carl, it looks like everybody was locking the brakes up, getting into turn one and turn three pretty bad, sliding up into cars, maybe causing wrecks. You got any concern with that? Man, that's a great point. Uh, 
I saw a lot of people doing it. Our car would do it a little bit. It's something with the way these cars are so stiff. It locks up the left front real easy, way easier than any other, you know, car I've run here. So, uh, you know, that is going to be interesting. I think when you start diving in on people, you might be right. That'll be something to watch for, wrecks like that. All right, man. You have a great race. We'll talk to you later on. Well, thanks, Rusty. Have a good broadcast. Right. Calling the shots for Carl Emerson today will be his crew chief, Bob Osborne. Let's hear from Bob. Hey, Bob Osborne, Andy Petrie, you got a copy? Andy, how you doing? Hey, pretty good, Bob. It's been five years since the Ford's finished in the top two here at this racetrack. What can you do today to change that stat? I hope, uh, I hope we can uh, do everything we can to change it, for sure. You know, we're going to work our best and uh, make sure the, the Office Depot Ford Fusion here runs well, stay out of trouble, and be there at the end. Hey, Bob, what have you guys learned about this car since we were here in April? It was, uh, you know, very early in the going, and what have you learned since then? I don't think we have enough time to, to <laughs> say everything we've learned. I mean, our program's come full circle pretty much uh, since the first Martinsville race. We were just kind of scratching the surface there, and everything we've learned we've applied to this race car, this, this track this weekend, so hopefully it pans out for us. Then for Bob. Hope it works out great for you. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Drivers and crews much more excited about what the car tomorrow will do today and how much they've learned since they were here back in April. Well, let's update some of the stories we'll be following today as we hear from four of the best pit reporters in the business, starting with Dave Burns. Well, Jerry, early on in his career, you might have tabbed Jimmy Johnson as a super speedway only ace. After all, his first pole came at the Daytona International Speedway, his first win at the two-mile California Speedway. But since then, he has steadily improved on the short tracks. This year, he broke through at Richmond and swept both races. Earlier this year, here in April, right here in Martinsville, he won this race, won at this racetrack, for the third time. Jimmy Johnson is second among all drivers in ranking as far as stats in 2007 at the short track. The only got better than him, Mike Massaro is going to talk about him. And Dave, of course we're talking about the point leader, Jeff Gordon, who over the years has become a master here at the Martinsville Speedway, but that has not always been the case. Gordon says it was during a test session here in 1994 when everything changed. During that test session, Gordon said he continuously experimented with his line and since then has not attacked this racetrack the same way since. The results have been nothing short of amazing. Gordon has led over 2,000 laps here. Today, he starts on the pole looking for his eighth Martinsville victory. But his crew chief, Steve Listart, says the goal is not to win. It's simply to survive 500 laps and come home with a top five, something that would help this team take a very large step in the direction of helping Gordon secure what potentially could be his fifth series title. Let's go to Jamie Little. And Mike, Jeff Gordon has to navigate his way down one of the most difficult pit roads on the circuit. Here at Martinsville, the entrance to pit road is actually blind. There's a big curve, and that makes visibility limited. So that leads to a lot of challenges. So who better to explain those challenges than veteran front tire changer Hollywood? Hollywood, what are you telling us here? What are we going to look for? Thanks, Jamie, and welcome, race fans, to a really tight pit road here in Martinsville. Some of the things to look for is a very small pit box. When we go around the car and hit the first lug nut with this air gun, brake dust goes everywhere. It makes it very difficult to see. We come around to the left side, and we notice there's not as much brake dust. This tool right here is very important to a tire changer today because they use it to blow out the brake dust on the left side. Very high brake temperature makes the wheel really hot. So sit back and enjoy, fans, because it's going to be exciting. As Mark Armstrong just said, drivers, crew chiefs, everybody has to hit their marks today, and they have to be alert at all times. Alan Dustin? Well, Jamie, Martinsville may be the smallest track on the circuit, but don't confuse small with easy. This little bullring is one of the toughest there is on car, crew, and driver. And success in today's race in large part is about managing tough conditions. For the pit crew, those tough conditions on pit road. For the driver, keeping his anger under control when he gets bumped and banged around in this little speedway. For the car, keeping the gears and the brakes intact. And, oh yes, the competition finding room to pass when there's little room to be found. Whose car, crew, and driver's toughest today? Let's start finding out. Thanks, guys. And on a track that is small, tight, and tough, all these onboard cameras are going to give you close-ups all day long. How about Martin Truex and starting second in the Sprint Bass Pro Chevrolet? Denny Hamlin starts 30th, the FedEx Freight Chevy. Tony Stewart, the two-time winner here, way back in 34th, the Home Depot Chevrolet. Kevin Harvick starts third, his best ever start at this racetrack in a cup car, the Shell Pennzoil Chevrolet. Jeff Burton, former winner here, starts 18th in the AT&T Chevrolet. Michael Walton, 29th, the Napa Auto Parts Toyota. Tony Raines, 
great effort in qualifying. Also the fastest car in happy hour, by the way, starts 10th. The Texas Instruments DLP Chevrolet. Carl Edwards, our in-race reporter, you've already heard from him in the office of Depot Ford. And looking back from our Chevy pace car, the Chevy Impala, Brett Bodine, a former winner here in NASCAR modified in Bush Series competition, now works full-time for NASCAR in the R&D program and also driving the pace car in that big Chevy pace car on Sunday afternoons. Okay, one of the unique parts of coming to Martinville, this track that was built some 60 years ago, is that uh, the train comes by a couple times a day, right off the back straight away, and so folks riding on the train or sometimes just the engineers can slow down and watch a little bit of cup action as they go by. They close the uh, train track so that the folks uh, don't have any danger, and the cars are going to have one more lap here. Rusty Wallace... 500 laps on a very tough paper clip shaped half mile track. You know what it takes to get it done here. What are these guys thinking about right now? Jerry, right now they're thinking about not having a crash, not tearing their brakes up, and watching going into turn one. That turn one on entry, Andy, is a really, really important turn. You could end your whole day right there. Especially with these tire pressures so low and these brakes cold, everything trying to get up to temperature. It takes a few laps just to get the car where you can actually drive it and run it full speed. 12 drivers trying to win a championship. They're the chase contenders. Remember, five of those start in the top 10, and five of them start 20th or worse. All the way back, Tony Stewart in 34th position. There's Tony's car. Oh, my, how much traffic does he have to get through to be able to get up there? Two in a row. Trying to make it three in a row in the NASCAR chase for the next Dell Cup. Second year driver, Martin Truex, outside of row one. Here they come out of turn four, crowd of almost 70,000 on their feet as the green flag waves at Martinsville Speedway. that turn making sure no one slides up and takes another car out still side by side clean side by side Gordon gets the five points for leading a lap here you get five bonus points for leading a lap you get ten for leading the most lap and you saw Martin Truex exit turn two awful high up in the dirty portion of the racetrack and I guarantee you guys that's what he was concerned about at the start of this race trying to get to the bottom of the track and he finally got back by there in front of the 29 of Kevin Harvick Kyle Busch in the five car looking a little bit racy behind the 29 of Harvick. These guys are just waiting for these tire pressures to get up where they can really put, you know, push the car. Right now they're just tiptoeing. First few laps they'll do this and then they'll start going at it. They're just trying to get in line right here. You see Martin Truex right there, another chase contender, trying to work the rear bumper of the 24 car, Jeff Gordon, up off the exit of turn two and turn four. Because folks, that's where all the passing is going to happen at. Single file back to about 10th uh, position. Earnhardt Jr. and McMurray were side by side for that spot. Now they get single file. Tire pressures on these cars are awful low at the start of this race. About eight pounds of air in the left-hand side, very, very low. And when the pressure gets up, the cars are going to stick better and run faster. But it's pretty treacherous while you're waiting for that to happen. Jeff Burden, a little bump there in the back of Bobby Labonte as these guys battle for position. That's 15th through 17th spot on your screen right there. Right now you see the curb come up. The 49 car, John Andretti, right dead against the curb. But if you hit that curb accidentally, it'll throw you up into the car alongside you. So you gotta be careful not to do that. Kyle Busch trying to be very aggressive. He looked high at turn three. Now he looks high again and tries to think better of it as he pulls right back on the bumper of Kevin Harvick. Alan? Doctor's five car was one of the last to get put through inspection and onto the racetrack this morning. During practice earlier in the weekend, he had contact with Greg Pipple. They had to take the entire front end of the car apart this morning to repair the bumper bar that supports the front bodywork on the car to repair it correctly for today's race. Alan Gustafson, the crew chief, told me that everything else was fine. Some people thought they might have the car turned around in the garage to change an engine. He said, no, we just had to repair that bumper bar to make sure everything's good for this race. Right now you see the one car of Mark Truex and Kevin Harvick in the 29 racing side by side. Folks, there is a little bit of a second lane up there. Looks like Harvick's trying to make it work. 
and so is Truex. Back and forth, up and down both lanes, but Harvick's got the position now. Andy, you talked about how typical it is to try to get a nose under somebody and open the door. That's what uh, Harvick did, and both he and Kyle Busch able to go by the one car. We saw Kyle Busch trying to work that outside groove, and it's just not clean enough yet, not enough rubber up in that groove to make it work. So these guys are just trying to work their way to the bottom of the racetrack and open it up, open up a lane down there. They did that on Mark Truex. Wendy, while that was going on, Jeff Gordon's just checking out in the field right now, but look at McMurray now working the second lane, trying to get past the nine car of Casey Kane. McMurray's got a great race car. He had a great car in practice in that happy hour session, and he's working this outside groove. I think he's going to find that going pretty tough to try to get up here and pass some of these good cars up there. Jamie McMurray has three top ten finishes here in his last four starts. He's been very good at Martinsville Speedway. Speaking of pretty good, how about this guy, Tony Range, fastest car in the happy hour practice on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and here's a guy looking for a ride next year, and he needs to show everybody what he can do, and right now he's doing a lot of good stuff. Spotters are pouring a little puff of smoke off of the right rear of Matt Kenza's car. Is it tire smoke? Is it a rub? You know, Andy, early in the race right here, it can be anything. I mean, a lot of bumping and banging early, trying to get yourself in position. Yeah, it could be just a tire rub, but more than likely, it's uh, locking up one of these brakes, either that right front or left front brake. They lock it up, get it in the corner, it'll make smoke, and sometimes you think, you know, you got a problem with the car, but it's just tire smoke. Now, some of these guys are going forward who qualify toward the back of the pack. Bobby Labonte, Carl Edwards. But how about the eight car of Dale Earnhardt Jr.? He started, folks, in seventh position. He is now being shown in 19th after just 12 laps. Mike, what's going on? Well, Dale Jr. really hasn't said much over the radio, but they were battling a loose condition in all day during practice earlier this weekend on Saturday. So much, in fact, they had to do extensive repairs and, and replacements on the brake system. They changed the brake bias and changed all the calipers on that race car, but it appears that they may be still struggling with that loose condition in. Moving back in the pack now, losing positions, probably hoping for an early yellow to be able to get that car adjusted. Here's a guy that everyone's chasing, Jeff Gordon. Coming into the day, had led 2,298 laps at Martinsville. He's led the first 12 here thus far. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back to the Subway 500 aerial coverage brought to you by our good friends at Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for over 50 years. Gives you a good view of this uh, half-mile paperclip-shaped facility in Martinsville, Virginia. Filled to the gills today. Over 65,000 NASCAR fans have jammed in here to watch uh, arguably what is one of the most exciting races of the year. Just five races remaining in the chase, four after today. Jeff Gordon, our pole sitter and early leader. Jeff has led all 24 laps here thus far. And right now, he's really managing the pace of the race, guys. I'm Andy and I are sitting here in a booth watching the 24 car speed. It looks like he's letting out of the gas pretty early. He's just coasting it in the corner. It looks to me right now, Andy, like he's conserving his brakes. This would be a great time to do that when you got that kind of a lead. You don't have anybody pushing you right up on your bumper, so you can take a little time there, back off a little early, and save some brake. We told you the chase contenders had a lot of work to do. How about this guy, Tony Stewart, starting back in 34th position in the 20 car, is now tiptoed his way up to 28. Alan? And uh, tiptoed would be the right expression there, Doc, because Tony Stewart does not have the greatest race car that he's ever had here in Martinsville. They struggled with this car yesterday in practice, threw a lot of things at it. His crew chief, Greg Cipidelli, told me this morning that he... When I asked him how his race car was, he kind of made a, 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 a grimace, would be the best way I would describe it, and never really answered the question, but the grimace said it all. Look for this team to try some pitch strategy gimmicks to try and buy some track position while they work on this car throughout the day. Andy, I would think as far as pitch strategy, these cars roll so much, and they use the right side tires so much, they could probably two-tire this thing and maybe gain some positions. The left side tires don't get a lot of work here just for that reason. So right side tires would be a good move, especially if you're back in the pack like Tony, just looking for something to try to get you out of this hornet's nest. Already early on, one of the challenges of this racetrack, Rusty, is uh, within a 30 or 35 laps, you start to work traffic, which Jeff Gordon is about to do. Now, I tell you, he, he's got a fast car. But with that said, Jerry, yesterday in practice, there was only four-tenths of a second between first and last. And right now, the last-place car out there, well, not the last-place car, but right now, Bill Elliott's getting lapped, and he started pretty far in the pack, back in the pack, and he's already going through the lap traffic and 
dicing his way to the front of the pack. One thing he's got in his favor is, is the rest of these guys, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, these guys are going to have to fight through this exact same traffic. So Steve Latar's telling him, just be patient. Just get one car at a time. Don't try to force anything here. Nobody's going anywhere. Now, there's nobody going anywhere because there's cars wrapped all the way around the racetrack. He's leading the race right now. And he's got the second place cars pretty far behind, but he's right on the bumper of everybody, so he's never getting any breathing room here. Now he has to use those brakes. The brakes he's been saving when he had that good lead, he's going to have to start using them now to dive inside these guys, maybe outbreak like Dale Jarrett right here. You have to outbreak him, get in the corner to keep that position. And one thing he needs to do is take that nose and duck it out behind a car, get some fresh air to the front of that nose, and keep the brakes as cool as they can. But you know what? This guy's a master of that. I watched Gordon do this a lot. And he's opening, while Gordon's opening up these moves right here, you see he's he's passing these guys. Harvick's hoping that'll just make it easier for him. Open the door up, and then he'll just follow them right through. Like there's a big sale at the mall today, and the parking lot just stays <laughs> congested all afternoon. You never get a chance to rest. You never do get a chance to rest. But, you know, take a look at Kevin Harvick from the end car here. He's got about 10 cars in front of him right there, and he's letting those brakes cool down. He's not overdriving the car. He's... And I really like how you said that, Andy, because Gordon is up there busting the hole. He's just kind of following along. Brad, what do you think of this? This is pretty wild out there. Hey, Rusty, they're getting after it. And, uh, and I love your comment earlier. I don't think people realize that you cannot drive this race car into that corner really hard. And I was talking to Todd Barrier, uh, Kevin Harvick's crew chief yesterday, and he says, you know, you have to be aggressive, but you got to roll that car through the center. And you'll hear guys, just like Rusty Wallace used to do it back in the day, let off at the start-finish line and coast these cars all the way into that corner and get back to that throttle. I just think it's incredible to sit here and watch that. Uh, Brad, I'm real interested to see what they can do with this car tomorrow, though. I mean, obviously, I drove the old car here, and it turned out good for me, but this, this car tomorrow is a, a different animal. See, Jimmy Johnson using his lap traffic as a pick to work well by some of these other guys and get some track position. 48 car, Jimmy Johnson moving up. The one car of Martin Truex moving back. They burn. And Jimmy's crew chief, Jack Canales, told me this morning, you know what, one of the things Jimmy works on at this racetrack is getting his rhythm on this small racetrack. It'll take him about 50 laps. At that point, he'll drive faster, and it'll also give me better feedback as a crew chief to know how to adjust on the car throughout the day. We're just past halfway to that 50-lap mark, and he has been moving forward. He passed Martin Truex, among others, who late this morning was getting a spring change in the rear of the car. I checked with crew chief Bodo Mannion about that, and he said, you know, I just had one more idea late in the runs in practice yesterday. Uh, Martin was experiencing a loose into the corner condition, and I think this rear spring change might help. Don't look for it early in the run, and he has been losing positions. Look for it late in the run for this car to stay under Martin. Dave, that was a great comment about Jimmy Johnson because it does take a while to settle in here. In fact, early in the race, you'll be passing cars, you'll be bumping and banging, trying to get through, and finally, Andy, when you clear them, Normally, my crew chief would come across and go, okay, breathe, calm down, let's settle in now. That's all, all that mess is done. You Another thing I, I heard him talking about was how the long, you know, these setups that Bono put in this car, he's trying to do something for the long run. And I've seen at this racetrack that is a big trade-off for these short run setups versus a long run setup. You give away a lot of that first speed and have a car that'll really run after you've run about 50 or 60 laps. And sometimes you don't get those long runs here. Well, you don't get the long runs, especially late in the race, maybe 15 to go. You got to make sure that things are jump and go. But, Jerry, these situations are going to change all day out here. Let's just sit back and watch it. It is a living, breathing organism. Martinsville Speedway, things are happening while they're happening. As Jeff Gordon sails by David Strimmey in heavy traffic after 39 laps back after these messages and a word from our ABC station. Is out in Martinsville. The reason in a moment. Leaders on pit road. This is Kyle Busch had just taken over second spot from Kevin Harvick. A four tire change on this car, Dave. Kevin Harvick gives up third spot for four fresh tires. Air pressure adjustment. The car needs forward bite, according to Harvick. Mike. Jeff Gordon real happy with his race car. A little loose on throttle to make a four tire change and drop the track bar down one round on the 24 car. Tight racetrack, tight pit road. Here they come off, and there's a blind corner there when you're coming off a of pit road. There's a race off pit road. Jimmy Johnson up a spot. Johnny Sauter up six positions. Kyle Busch lost a couple. And Martin Truex back four spots. Remember, he was having trouble with the car early on. We'll, we'll update what he was doing here a moment ago on pit road. Here's why we're under caution here. The seven car, new colors for Robbie Gordon. Right front tire issues. He tags the wall. And that brought out yellow for the first time here on lap 44. Back with a restart at Martinsville in just a moment. Back at Martinsville.
Jacksonville, Virginia. Jeff Gordon will lead him out of turn four. And the green flag wave once again. Gordon Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, Johnny Sauter, and Kyle Busch, the top five after the first caution flag of the day. Two leaders get away scot free from this lap traffic, but the rest of these guys are having to deal with lap traffic on the inside, and they will for quite a few laps here. And that was a key move by both of them because to get that track position, not have to wrestle with these guys. Early in this race really saves the whole entire car. If you think the racetrack is tight, folks, the pit road is even tighter and more difficult to negotiate. Blind corners, you got to pit around a curve. Let's show you what happened a moment ago and how close it can get there. The 96 Reigns coming out. See, uh, Tony Reigns was trying to race that five car for that spot coming off pit road. He didn't realize the 10 car was going to turn into his pit area or his pit stall. Caught him by surprise. <laughs> Andy, it looks like it just knocked the 10 car right into his pit stall. Pretty perfect. I mean, I know that wasn't planned. Usually these guys got to come in a little bit of an angle. And he got hit and knocked him in dead square. So the pit crew guys are probably saying, hey, man, this, do this again. It's perfect. Hey, guys, the car's running one, two. Both made adjustments on that first pit stop. First, Jeff Gordon down on the track bar. What's he trying to do, Russell? Well, right now, he's trying to get some forward bite up off the corner. If you take the right side track bar and lower it down, it's going to make the car tighter on entry and give it more grip on exit. So he's probably uh, used that to his advantage right now to fix the exit of the corners, I would say. Andy, Kevin Harvick wanted air pressure adjustments to get the bite. How do you do that? Well, you can lower the tire pressures in both rear tires and hopefully hook them up a little better off the corner. There's a little trade-off there because sometimes that'll make the car a little bit tight through the center, and it can actually aggravate that loose condition off. So these crew chiefs are, are making changes. They'll see how the car performs, and then they'll use that information for the later stops. Speaking of crew chiefs, let's take a look at our AT&T Crew Chief Challenge. Now, the Hendrick Motorsports teams have won 14 times this year, seven times of the 14 chase races, and uh, the question today, which Hendrick driver has the best chance of winning at Martinsville? Would it be A, Kyle Busch, B, Jeff Gordon, C, Jimmy Johnson, or D, Casey Mears? Text the word CREW to 191 on your wireless phone and send in your answer. The results will be shown later on in today's race. I think I know who to get most of the votes right now. Well, Jimmy Johnson, I know you're talking about Jeff Gordon because he's leading the race, but Jeff, uh, Jimmy Johnson's starting to get his car kind of coming around there. He's running these guys down. Oh, a little bit of contact here. Bill Elliott and Tony Stewart, a couple of former Cup champions, having a little tag here at Martinsville. So it's talking about these lap cars. It's, it's just so hard to negotiate around these guys and frustrating for these lead lap cars. You see, Tony Stewart just gets on the left side of Bill Elliott there and turns him sideways. But, you know, ex like exiting turn two, you can lose the front end awful easy. And I think that's probably what happened between. Yeah, that was unintentional. It's just you, you need that whole racetrack. You need that extra, you know, 10 feet. Bill Elliott, by the way, in that 21 car because of taking the champion's provisional, his third of the year, and trying to get that car back in the top 35 and owner's points to be guaranteed a starting spot for the remainder of the year and, more importantly, for the beginning of 2008. For more on Tony Stewart, let's check in with Alan Bessler. Remember I talked about they were going to try some strategy, Doc, to get some track position. They took just two tires on that pit stop, but then Tony had to put the car in reverse and back up around the car in the stall in front of him. So some of the time savings they were trying to get with the two tires, they lost to this tight pit road. Well, we talked earlier, don't get stuck in the pits, and that can happen. you got to get yourself where you can get out of it, and it's awful hard to do that here especially when you've got somebody parked in the pit stall behind you and in front of you. You just can't get your car aimed in there correctly, so you see he has to back up and then pull out of the pit stall, losing quite a few spots here. Yeah, nearly got Bobby Labonte as he was exiting. Remember, he got tagged or he had some contact last week at Charlotte with a couple of different drivers trying to leave pit road, including the 15 car of Paul Menard. Remember, that was the contact these guys had at one, lap 177 at Charlotte. Here's Jimmy Johnson making a pass by the 29. That is for second position. Oh, now, this is going to be pretty interesting to see how this turns out. See how close the 24 and the 48 really are in lap times. It's the first time during the race that they're first and second, so we can judge. I was talking to Steve Latart down in the garage, and I asked him what he thought of this 48 with it. Felt like they were going to give them another run for their money here. And he says, you know, if you watch practice, you wouldn't think that they would be quite as good because the lap times weren't there. He says, but I know Jimmy. Jimmy takes a little bit of time, just like we heard earlier, to get his rhythm, and then he comes on. So he's expecting to have to race his 48 all day. Dave Burns and Jerry have taken a jump on his race car. That will help as well. Reported the car loose early in the run, so they made an air pressure adjustment, which would give a driver more confidence at the beginning of the run. So see, immediately, he got around the 29 of Harvick. 
Jimmy Johnson certainly has a history of being awfully good here, winning back-to-back -back events this race and, of course, the spring. And in the spring race, how about the final laps having to battle your mentor, Jeff Gordon, for the win? We asked Jimmy Johnson about that. Uh, last in laps, I'm in the lead, and, and Jeff wants by <laughs> and uh, decides to you know, start using the bumper to, to get me out of the way and, and try to get by. And I think we both learned a lot, and the, the whole industry kind of learned a lot about the car tomorrow and how forceful you need to be to really knock someone out of the way. The margin of victory was 65 thousandths of a second, and uh, we had our statistician up here do the work and it was 102 inches that's how the difference was which was eight and a half feet that was the margin at the checkered flag as russ thompson did the calculating for us that's close folks jeff gordon finishing second in the spring today not going to happen here in the fall because i'm going to be the man right now he is the man he has led all 67 laps thus far jeff gordon trying to win three in a row here in the chase for the next l cup Welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia, under caution for the second time today here in the Subway 500. Lap 67, the 70 car involved, and there was some contact between the 70 and the 96 of Tony Reigns. These cars were battling for seventh position. Great battle for Reigns and Sutter, and watch the right front of the 96 car. Looks like Tony Reigns just had his car pushed just a little bit coming up off that corner. Got the right front corner of his car into the left rear tire of the 70. See, it cuts that tire down. Round he goes. Andy, it looks like maybe the splitter on the front of the 96 car actually just sliced that tire. That's what it looks like. That's exactly what it looks like. So the splitter split the tire. Let's see how that works as we head down to our ESPN Dish Tech Center and Tim Brewer. Thank you, Jerry. You're exactly right, folks. You've got a valve stem out here we use on speedways on the inside. That's where we use it on a short track. So what we're thinking, the splitter actually went into the sidewall of the tire, cutting the sidewall down. That's the reason the 70 car had its problem a while ago. Jerry? Now we perfectly understand what happened with that splitter. And for more information on splitters, log on to ESPN.com. Search word Tech Center. A feeling today guys we're gonna see the splitter causing a lot of problems because they're running so close out here Andy especially getting into one and then turn three and running out of room now, I talked to Mike Ford down in the garage uh, the crew chief for the 11 car Denny Hamlin he was telling me that their starting position back there 30th this is some of the things they were worried about even though this car is really tough and it can take a lot of beating and banging front to rear and even side to side it's just that splitter getting into the tires and cutting the tires down uh, it seems to be a lot more vulnerable to that and we're seeing that already if you're Tony Reigns, you got nothing to lose. You're already right now don't have a ride for 2008, so you got to impress someone. He had that top 10 finish where he just drove with those last few laps at Talladega, and he is driving that 96 car here, being shown in the top 10 in seventh position. They're chasing Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. What a surprise at Martinsville. They're going to black flag the 70 car because of the bumper there hanging in the back, and you see it sort of dangling there. They're going to bring him on the pit road as Jeff Gordon leads him down for the green flag once again. Guys, don't look now, but Tony Stewart, that 20 car, is able to now see the front. He's all the way up to 16th position. He can see Gordon from where he is as he, as you heard Alan Bessick say, is tiptoeing toward the front. One thing Gordon needs to watch out for, NASCAR just warned him about slowing the field down when he comes down to get the green flag. They don't like that. They want you to ha have a, a maintain a steady speed and get that, that green flag. And they just warned him about that. Well, buddy, you are absolutely right on that one because you know what? Many years ago, I got fined $5,000 for an incident for jumping the flag and making a comment about it afterwards. Yeah. But I was leading the race, and I took off, and they said, you can't do that. I said, well, why not? I'm leading the race. Well, they showed me. Yeah, I was holding the microphone when you made that comment and you had to pay that money, so I remember it vividly. So what kind of advantage does Jeff Gordon get with that kind of start by slowing him down? How does it help him? Well, it's a cat and mouse game that he's playing with that inside lane. He wants to get clear of all this lap traffic, and the way to do that is to beat him down to turn one. And he's trying to just outsmart that guy on the inside, which this time was David Gilliland. Al Bush, guys, just uh, will not see. He's aggressive from the get-go now, again trying to get up on the outside of Kevin Hartman. Top groove looks like it's starting to come in just a little bit. If you have to use it, you can go up there, but definitely the fast way around the racetrack's dead on the bottom if you got a good handle on car. It's like Kyle Busch is making this outside lane work. He's still got a little bit a little bit more work to do to get by this 29 car and get clear. He has to get clear like he does right here. 
was a good move right there. Hendrick Cars, first, second, and third. Remember, Hendrick Cars have won seven of the last nine races that they have run here at Martinsville Speedway. Man, that's just an unbelievable stat to run that good every single time you come here. Dave? Doc, did you ride with Kevin Harvick right now? Remember, they had a miserable time here in April. Broke a fuel, fuel pump cable, had that fire from the door foam, the protective foam that uh, caught fire from the heat of the exhaust pipe, and finished way down in the pack. They've changed most of those things. They've also upgraded their brakes this time around. A lot of teams learned a lot of things about the car of tomorrow at Martinsville in April, and have made significant adjustments to make them better this time around. These battles up front. How about Carl Edwards and these guys that are just locked up, nose to tail. There's Edwards, the 99 car, right behind the 84, A.J. Allmendinger. Trouble in turn two when uh, the 38 car, David Gillen, has spun around. That will bring out the yellow flag for the third time here in the first 80 laps. See Dale Jarrett down. It looks like he's got a little bit of damage on his car. Kind of stuck on top of that curb, maybe, Andy, where he can't get out of there. Oh, he's on that grass. He finally gets he out of He's got it. Hard to get traction on that green grass down there on the bottom. Yeah, especially when the back of his car is hanging down like that. Looks like he got hit so Blue hard. Down in the corner. Rear bumper's laying down on it now. Dale Jarrett making his 43rd and final start here at Martinsville Speedway, where he made his very first start back in 1984. Let's show you what happened here down in turns one and two. That's just two things that happened there. He looks like he just wheel hopped the car, actually locked up the rear brakes and slid up the racetrack. Just These guys slow were, down. These guys were racing hard for that lucky dog spot in case this caution comes out, which they brought out. But uh, that's why they're racing so hard. Dale Jarrett looks like he just. Hey, take a look at Carl Edwards trying to get checked up. Barely misses everybody. Skims that left front corner along the right rear corner of Paul Menard. Get, Watch Kevin Harvick get through it here. Heads up. Uh, lead the needle. Come on, come on. Good job there. What a move by Kevin Harvick to thread the needle. Under caution for the third oh, time today. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back to the Subway 500 under caution for the third time. And a great crowd on him. A beautiful afternoon for racing here in Virginia. Let's listen in to Jeff Gordon's radio. Did I give you a message down there? Yeah. We're going to stay out this time there. But they were complaining about your restart. I didn't even see it. But they said they need a steadier speed coming to the green. Okay. Tell them to make sure they don't lay back on me, and I will. Yeah, unfortunately, you got to do what NASCAR says. But these guys are looking at him right now, and if he slows up and does a jackrabbit start and takes off, they're going to bring him in. They're going to penalize him. They don't tolerate that. Casey Mears on pit road. Commitment line violation, we're being told, as Mears pulls down. Okay, watch the commitment line here. Watch him duck down. And comes back on the racetrack. That's why he... Brought him on to pit road. Others have pitted a moment ago. 31 car of uh, Jeff Burton, who was tagged from behind a little bit in that uh, chain reaction crash. 43 of Bobby Labonte, the double zero of David Rudiman, and the 66 also in the pits, Jeff Green, while we're under yellow. Yeah, you know firsthand NASCAR doesn't, uh, they, don't, they don't joke about these restarts here. They want you to do it the way they want to do it to give everyone a level playing field. And we're just being told that Casey Mears is going to be penalized again, this time for too fast exiting the pit. It's got to be 30 miles an hour. He'll have to come back in. Jeff Gordon will lead him around very gingerly. As the green flag gets set to wave, and right in front, a half a car length in front of his teammate Jimmy Johnson and another Henry Carter, Kyle Busch, back in third. Well, that was a good move by Jimmy Johnson. He was able to jump in right behind the 24 car, get clear of 45 car, Kyle Petty. That was a good move. You talked about the high groove in the five car. He's trying to use it again. Looks like he's got something worked out up there. Good to see this, this racetrack having two raceable grooves. Yeah, every, every time on the restart, Kyle just jumps to that outside and gets all the real estate he can. You see him holding on. Now I got to bleed. It's a 29 car. Kevin Harvest catch him too quickly. He's probably going to duck in behind the 48. And there he goes now. 
Guys talked about the garage area, how far they've come with this car of tomorrow since the race they ran here in April. You couldn't have done that back in April here, being able to run up across the racetrack in a couple, maybe even three groups. Looks like these guys have learned a lot about the car. We heard Bob Osborne saying he couldn't even count the things that they've learned since then. Brad? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Doc and Andy, and uh, the guys in the garage area say they're, they're really pleased with this race car, and we saw them at Talladega uh, last couple weeks ago, and it, it wasn't a great race, but they've got enough information going forward to Daytona to have a, a good super speedway package for next year, and after Atlanta next week, the following week, the COT car is on the track to work on the mile and a half, the bread and butter of the program, in order to get that up to speed, and you'll see J.J. Yelly, along with Kyle Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in his 08 car with Tony Urey Jr. for Hendrick Motorsport at that tire test. Important test for the COT to get set up for mile and a half racetracks, and we have trouble here. Lap 91, the 41 car, Sorensen, David Reagan, 19 of Elliott Sadler. Heavy damage on Eric Almarola's Chevy in the front end. And he's got damage on the front, damage on the back. The guy gives a pinball out there, and he got tore up big time. The old one car did chain reactions here they, everything's happened it happens so fast with these cars you can't see around these corners good something happens in front of you it's hard to, it's really hard to drive through it 19 of Elliott Sadler there you saw Riggs a moment ago had his best run of the year here back in the spring when he finished eighth let's see if we can show you what happened man they just start stacking up the 10 car the 19 both Everham cars it's like they end up taking each other out and the 01 of Eric Almarola he got damaged, too. He's so used to seeing Mark Martin drive that car. I'm trying to get used to Eric in that car at the moment. Easy, easy, easy. Well, nice nice job, effort nice by job. Jeff Burton to get through it. Back with more from Martin to watch these messages and a word from our ABC station. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Under caution for the fourth time here. In the first 92 laps, let's show you again we, uh, the multi-car crunch we had that in turn one. Now watch the 10 car, top of your screen, and the 19 as they get together. Yeah, the 10 car actually looks like he's starting to lock up the rear brakes. He gets up high and takes his own teammate out, Elliott Sadler. Man, Andy, it is piled up big time. You see, Reed Sorensen stops that 41 car. Doesn't have any damage at all. He's just going to drive away from here. And, oh, that's going to leave a mark right there. Uh, he's probably thinking, how did that just happen? <laughs> he thought he was clean till this happened. <laughs> Ten car nails the throttle and spins him out. But, you know, to uh, Scott Riggs' defense, he didn't see Reed Sorens is coming. No if way. You, if you think the hits are hard here, the hits are really going to be hard coming up on Monday night in Jacksonville. Colts and Jaguars, Monday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Monday night football. Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Indianapolis Colts headed to Jacksonville Municipal Stadium to face Fred Taylor and the Jaguars. 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage begins at 7 with Monday Night Countdown. Mike Jaws and Tony, Michelle Tafoya, and our own Susie Culver will be on hand covering the action on Monday night. Getting set for the green flag. And oh, by the way, Jeff Gordon has led all 97 laps thus far. Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch right behind him. It's a Hendrick Parade. One, two, three. Restarts. These are really key. Every time you run these short tracks, you want to get away from these guys. Get a good start. Jimmy Johnson clears Bill Elliott down the back straightaway. So does Kyle Busch. Here comes Johnny Sauter without that rear bumper. He's trying to be the first car one lap down. If he can work by this 21 car, Bill Elliott, he'll be the first car in line to get that free pass if the caution comes out. And Andy, we've seen a lot of fellows lose rear bumpers in the past. Is this going to hurt him? No, this won't hurt him at all here. I mean, it probably wouldn't even hurt on a big track, but especially here, it's not going to hurt. You see this little contact with Bill Elliott? Yeah, if you're Kevin Harvick, you can't be liking this. Two guys that are a lap down right in front of you rubbing a little bit. Well, and that's exactly what caused the problem with the 70 car was cutting his left rear tire down the last time he had that kind of contact with Tony Raines. All right, right now, Kevin Harvick, he's just going to work that high lane, try to get away from him. Now it looks like he's going to clear him. Back up front, Jeff Gordon trying to stay in front of Jimmy Johnson. Dave? And, Jerry, you know that you've got a team behind you when you're a driver, but you also have one very vocal advocate, whether it's arguing something with NASCAR or maybe even talking to your teammates. Maybe the five-car behind the 48, Chad Canals, on the radio here. Hey, how about calling the five-car spotter? You know, we're running a one, two, three here. Just back off just a little bit. Copy that. Going. We're only 92 laps into the race. Yeah, you'd think you wouldn't have to tell them that. Well, uh, 
32 laps in, guys, but this is Martinsville. There's a lot of time so far. The five car showing a little more patience at this restart. And bad smoke coming out of the back of the 11 car. Denny Hamlin, one of the chase contenders. We saw a moment ago going in the corner, and he's got, looks like, a, what, a left front tire rub. That fender's rubbing that left front tire. He's probably hit somebody pretty square with that front end. There's just not a lot of clearance between that front of the tire and that fender with this new car. See Dave Blaney here in the 22, just Whoa. checks up in front of him. And side, just, and side. I was looking at the cars in the garage area. And there's, side. there's just very little space between the front of that tire and that fender. And I, and I was wondering if this was going to happen sometime today. I remember his teammate, uh, Joe Gibbs' teammate, Tony Stewart, had a left front tire rub at Kansas City. It didn't come in and had serious issues from it. Jimmy Johnson now trying to sniff a little bit of that lead. Yeah, going back to that bump right there, the, the front bumpers behind these cars are pretty doggone strong. I mean, you've really got to hit hard to bend those things back, Andy. We've seen all year long these car tomorrows can take a lot of abuse. We saw these two guys banging in reverse order in the spring here in the final laps. Looks like Jimmy's racing Jeff pretty hard here. That was uh, Jimmy's radio we heard a while ago about just being 92 laps into the race and uh, trying to be cautious. But I believe he, Jimmy Johnson wants those five points. If you're in the 48 car, Rusty, how aggressive can you afford to be trying to get a championship and trying to race your teammate for the lead? Well, I'm going to be very aggressive right now because I don't really care about my teammate right now. I, want, I care about five points like Andy just said. That's what's important at the moment. Jimmy says, hey, I want to win this championship, too. It's not all about Jeff Gordon. And Jeff Gordon right now thinks it's all about him. And that's the mentality a driver has to have. I saw Jeff Gordon do something really smart right there. He, he felt like the 48 was inside of him. So he left him just enough room to drive inside. But then when he saw that he was clear, he just pulled right back down on the bottom. But he is not going to put himself in a compromising position here early in the race. One of the cars starting to make a move back toward the front, so 99. Jamie Little? That's right, Doc. He's been on a charge all day. He's gained 11 positions since the last pit stop. And it, you remember, he doesn't have a whole lot of experience on this track. So Bob Osborne, his crew chief, continues to give him little updates, reminding him things to do to take care of his brakes. So Carl came over the radio just a few moments ago and said, this is the best race car I have had as he makes a charge behind Dale Earnhardt Jr. Guys? Yeah, that's 8th, 9th, and 10th. And while you were talking about the great run for Edwards, uh, the 48 car just blew by the 24. That's why I think Jeff just gave it to him. Trying to be smart because we're only 100 laps into the race. There's no reason to be doing anything that'll get you in trouble. Just let the 48 car have those five points. He's going to get them sometime during the day. Just let him have them right here. Let's cruise and maybe even save some brake pedal and, and some brake pad. Well, Andy, you know the 24, could, the 24 car could not get away from Jimmy Johnson, so it was a pretty smart move just letting him have it. Got to wonder how long the 11 will stay out with that fender rub there. Remember, we told you about the teammate. Tony Stewart had the trouble in uh, Kansas City, and they stayed on the racetrack, and he cut that left front tire, and ended up having the whole finish. So, Andy, what do you do? You're making the calls now for Denny Hamlin. I'm going to leave him out here right now. I know that you see that tire rubbing, but these cars don't are pit, not. Don't pit, don't pit. They all want dragons. Looks like Mike Ford agrees with me. He's going to leave him out there. Even if he blows this tire out, it's not likely that it's going to tear the car up like you would at, say, a Kansas City. And he's waiting on a caution, which he gets right here. This is a big break. Fire beneath the hood of the 0-1. Eric Almarola bailing out in a hurry. He's Remember, out. He's out. He was involved in that chain reaction crash earlier in the afternoon down in turns 1 and 2, and now he comes out of the U.S. Army Chevy. He's got something crazy going on right here. It's just like, like a fuel fire or maybe an oil fire under the hood. This makes me think it's fuel because it's oh, coming out now. of the carburetor uh, intake opening there. It was probably related to the crash you had earlier. See, the front of that car all came in. It might have jolted. Uh, it could be the oil cooler. It actually could be oil, an oil fire under the hood, and then it makes its way out that opening. It jarred something loose, whether it's a fuel line or oil line or cracked an oil cooler, like you said. I've got to believe something happened because of this crash. That's what instigated everything. Armin on the scene trying to get the uh, exterior fire extinguished before they raise the hood and get more air to it. Eric Almarola walking back toward the garage area. That's it, just a crazy look right there. He's been in the race car, been on the racetrack, and he gets out of the track, and he's just walking along with all the fans down pit road. <laughs> well, the, the <laughs> safety, safety workers were trying to get him to go over to the care center and get in the ambulance. That's required if you uh, bring out a caution or hit the wall, have contact. NASCAR wants you to make a little visit over to the care center. Yeah, he's only making his fifth ever start in a cup car. Remember, he will co-drive in 2008. 
with the eight car with the U.S. Army sponsorship on it with uh, Mark Martin for DEI. I'd be surprised if we don't see these leaders pit now under this caution. I don't know how long it's going to take to kind of clean this mess up. This may keep pit road closed for a lap or two. You know, walking around like Eric Amarola was doing and with all the fans, that's what's unique about Martinsville. It's so tiny, there's no way to uh, get away from anybody. Not that you want to get away from your fans. I've always liked hanging out with my fans, to tell you the truth. But boy, out of the car, right dead in the middle of them. That was something. That's the good thing about Martinsville Speedway. You're right on top of the action here. Whether you've got a seat in this massive arena or this, this tiny arena, I should say, you're right on top of everything that happens here. That's why I've always loved coming to this racetrack. Now, what he needed to do right then, Jerry, is just stop and take some pictures with everybody. That's what makes it so nice. It's been 67 laps since the leaders came on the pit road, lap 47. There's the red flag with the yellow cross, and he is about to open pit road. See the light turn green, and now he will wave the green flag. And we'd expect to see Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Powell, and Kevin Harvick and company head into the pit road opening there in turn three. Remember, it's 30 miles an hour. It takes them a while to get around there. Seems like it's three miles an hour when you drive down that pit road at that speed. It's so slow, but that's what they have. You know, this pit, pit road is so narrow, you have to go slow to be safe. Johnson comes down. Gordon. Let's go down to Jamie Little. And Carl Edwards worked his way up to ninth. He said he's a little tight through the center. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment, and it helped that Elliott Sadler's out in front of him, so there's a gap for him. Let's go to Allen. Kyle Busch pitting from third spot. Needs a little grip, a little drive off. Going to make a track bar adjustment on the five car and four tires, Dave. Two words from the leader. Pretty good. Two cans of fuel, four tires, zero adjustments. Mike? Jeff Gordon still pretty happy. A little bit loose in, a little bit loose off. A four tire change and wedge adjustment on the 24 car. off of pit road adjustments trying to get a little more grip everyone trying to do something with the car except jimmy johnson and uh, score to scare him he says the car is perfect plus one for harvick minus one for kyle bush and pretty much a push among the others in the top 10. and when you hear chad canals and jimmy johnson say the car just put four tires on it don't change a thing that's going to worry you if you're the competition sometimes that can get you in trouble though you have a car that's so good at this point of the race and you don't adjust on it that can come back to get you later how does front tire changer David Collins out of Riverside, California get it done for Martin Truex? We will show you here. Watch the action here. Look at that brake dust. You see it flying out of that wheel? That's one of the things these front tire changers have to deal with. Hits all these lug nuts, runs around to the other side. See the shadows. It makes it almost just like this for the tire changer to be able to see these lug nuts. Those shadows really do play havoc. Remember, Mark Holly Ward Armstrong told us at the beginning of the show, the brake dust is your enemy here. Get you in your face, your eyes, you got to blow it away. But they got a great job on that True X pit stop. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back to the Subway 500 here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia under caution for the fifth time. This one coming out lap 113, a pretty significant fire under the 0-1 car of Eric Almarola. The fire's out, the car's still sitting on the racetrack and we told you that the racetrack is tight pit road is very tight hard to get in and hard to get out watch the five car not changing the right andy you've been that right front tire changer how close is this it's close i mean you're you're in real tight quarters here the tire changer is probably not as much trouble as the tire carrier he's the one that's got to gather this thing up and get it back to the pit wall and i tell you i can't really blame anything on tony stewart on that one it's just so tight getting in there just run out of room Let's visit with our in-race reporter here, car number 99, uh, Carl Edwards. Carl, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? I'm clear, Rusty. Carl, it looks like you had a pretty fast car out there. A lot of guys stayed out on the racetrack, kind of got you back there a little bit. But, hey, what's that car feeling like now? Tell you what, man, this, uh, this off Depot Fusion is the best one I've ever had here. So, really proud of my guys and having a heck of a good time, man. What's the toughest part of the racetrack right now, Carl? The toughest part is uh, you know, those lap cars on the bottom on the restarts. This is, uh, I mean, you know how it is. It just gets so bottled up, and it's, it's really hard to get racing, you know? All right, buddy. Thanks for talking to us. We'll talk to you later. All right, cool. Thanks, Rusty. Hey, Bob Osborne. Andy Petrie up here. You got a copy? Andy, how you doing? Hey, pretty good. You, these, you see these top 12 guys just stayed out. They pitted before you guys did. And uh, you see this kind of trend going on uh, during the day where you guys stay out of sync? Yeah, I think that's going to be the case. The uh, guys running the back are going to cycle on different uh, tires than us. And, and uh, we just need to stay with the guys we're racing, and we should be okay. 
Ten four. Sometimes though, that gets you back here in this traffic, and we heard Carl talking about the lap cars. I mean, what can you do? Do you have to just try to be patient, working your way by these guys? Yeah, that's the case. You just got to take your equipment, be patient, don't push anything too hard, and uh, everything will be okay. We're coming to one second, but I'm going to sign off. Okay. Have a good. Have a good one. Bob Osborne there calling the shots. Carl Edwards uh, in six previous trips to this racetrack has yet to log a top 10 finish. His best finish here 12. So he says this track's never been very good to me. I hope it could change today. Lining up behind the pace car, Jeff Burton, our leader. Remember, he's one of the guys that, that, that pitted earlier and stayed out under this caution flag. As they get ready for the start, let's listen into the spotters as we go full throttle. picking up some valuable bonus points. Jeff Burton, remember, he jumped a couple of spots in the chase last week after that uh, top five finish at Charlotte. Behind him, good run for Jeff Green in the 66 car. Man, I just love seeing these leaders kind of marred back in traffic because they're awful good, Andy. I want to see them get through this thing. Sometimes it's like an old short track where you take the fast cars and you put them in the back this see how fast they get to the front. This is a real critical point in the race for these point leaders like Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. They have, they're having to deal with race traffic, lap cars, this is going to be real tough. They need to be very patient right here. We just got to watch for the wrecks up front if the wrecks do happen. A little while ago, we saw the six car. David Reggie really get knocked around. He's all sideways. The right rear quarter panel knocked in on that car. A lot of contact down there at turn three. That's the thing. You could be minding your own business here, trying to just stay away from guys in front of you, but you can get knocked into them here just by somebody else. Oh, look at this. They go three, almost went three wide there with Sorensen on the inside. These guys mired back. That is 12, 13, 14 back in this pack here. Just double file in the corner. Well, take a look at the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, a 24, Jeff Ford. They're side by side, but they can't go anywhere. They're just blocked in behind Greg Biffle and Scott Riggs right now. It's almost like being on the interstate trying to pick the fast lane. Which one's going to move here? I go down the apron sometimes. Don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> yeah, I usually pick the wrong lane anyway. Jimmy Johnson has picked the inside there behind Riggs in the 10 car, 24 car. Has a line on the outside behind the 16 of Greg Biffle. And here Kevin Harvey's got the best uh, seat in the house. Well, he's trying to find the best lane. He wants to follow the fastest car through. He right now doesn't know if it's the top lane of Jeff Gordon or the bottom lane with Jimmy Johnson. How about looking ahead at these guys? You Whoa. see everybody bouncing off each other. It's got to scare you to death. Great aerial shots of this battle back in the pack here. These uh, chase contenders, courtesy of our good friends at Goodyear. The Ooh. official tire of NASCAR, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for over 50 years. We saw the 24 car at the check up. Got stuck behind the 10 car, Scott Riggs, and Kevin Harvick just took advantage of that and sailed it right down in there. Looks like he's going to try to follow that 48 through now by Jimmy Johnson. Looks like Jeff had things, Jeff Gordon had things going his way on the outside until that 10 car just jumped right up in front of him. There's the 99 car of Carl Edwards coming in right behind McMurray. So we talked about, he said it's the best car he's ever had at Martinsville, and he's proven it as he's making his way back into the top 20 there, right in front of the 12 car of Newman and the one of Truex. So right now, they're letting everything sort out. Just after a restart here now, guys, they're side by side. And this is going to stop in a little while. In a little while, we'll start getting more single file to get the cars so they can start passing. Right now, they're just all boggled up out here. More on Martin Truex with Dave Burke. And of course, he's mired back in traffic now, Doc, but they've been working on a car that will not turn well. That last pit stop, a track bar adjustment and wedge. Gucci Photo Man is saying, I'm trying to put some bite back into your in and off of the corners, trying to get that driver some grip on this track. Everyone trying to grip this racetrack. Concrete on the inside of the curbs. Asphalt down the straightaways. Jeff Burton, who won here back in 1997. 
one of his 19 career wins. Remember, it was here a year ago that Jeff Burton came in as the chase leader, had engine failure, and finished 42nd, which caused him to go from first all the way back to fifth in the chase for the next Dell Cup. Burton, our leader, back in just a moment. Never dreamed it would take me this far. Welcome back to the Subway 500 at Martinsville Speedway. The sixth race in the chase for the next Dell Cup. The story in the Pepsi race rundown. Points leader Jeff Gordon on the pole. And position here so important. You can see it as he dominated for the first 108 laps. Started exactly where he needed to be, Susie, by getting out front, taking advantage of his opportunity to get in those five bonus point laps. And he has dominated this race thus far. But this place is so small, it's almost impossible to avoid trouble. And that's the key. And three chasers did a pretty good job. Of it here. They all really got lucky as you see the guys weave through that and you know you have one spin anywhere in the lineup and everyone is involved automatically. Your spotter has to be on guard. The two dominant forces at Martinsville have been Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. Gordon's won seven times. Johnson's won the last two and finally at lap 109 Jimmy Johnson takes the lead. Jimmy showed a lot of muscle. He got up and under Jeff kind of moved him around a little bit. Has a fast race car. I think it's going to shake out between the Henry boys as the day goes on. Now these two have won seven of the last nine but right now it's Jeff Burton who's got the lead. About time, Doc, the only chase driver who had not led in the chase. Exactly, Susie. Jeff Burton now trying to hang on to the lead here after the troubles he had at Talladega. Remember, engine troubles had to rebound it with a top five finish. Now, how about some contact back in the pack, though, with the 29 and the 24? It's like you see them bang wheels here, just side by side. They're working up through this lap traffic. This is what I was talking about, being a very critical point of the race for these guys. They're going to have to be careful as they work through this traffic. Well, you see them bang wheels, and all of a sudden, Jeff Gordon comes out with a, with a bent-up right front fender. And if you get too bent up and get on that tire and cause a rub like we saw earlier, he don't want that to happen, that's for sure. These guys are still going at it right here. You see these uh, Roush teammates have got the way blocked a little bit from 24. We'd had some reports earlier that the 20 car of Tony Stewart was complaining of a bit of an overheating problem. Tony Mired back in the pack there behind the 8 car. That is 20th and 21st. And the 8 car, Mike, we've heard something about an electrical issue with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, Doc, they're extremely concerned. They're really monitoring the voltage right now. Already Dale Jr. switched to the backup ignition box, and they're considering coming in to change batteries. You can see that right now. They also have backup ignition boxes out ready to go as well. But some serious concerns in the 8 camp about their electrical situation right now. That's a serious problem here at Martinsville when you have an electrical problem because you've got so many blowers. You got brake brake blowers, you got rearing coolers, you got helmet coolers. There's so many things that you have to work on to keep cool, and it all takes electricity. Andy, just help me with something here. I cannot understand why these guys run this such a small battery at a track that's so dependent on electric. Don't get me started on that. I'm a big battery guy. <laughs> so you don't understand it either, right? Okay. Take a look at a 31 car, Jeff Burton. You know, we talked about him earlier. He won this race back in 1997. He knows how to get around this racetrack. And I'm watching the lap times, Andy, and he's looked like he's the fastest car in the track that last time by. That's just how much this clear racetrack can help these guys. They don't have to fight any of these lap cars. They just get out there and run their own groove and their own rhythm. How about the 66 car, Jeff Green? Good run for Green here. He finished eighth in this race a year ago after qualifying in the top 10. Likes this racetrack, former Bush Series champion. Remember, these guys are out of sequence. Both Burton and Green pitted on lap 84. But how about the guy back in third? Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42 car last pitted on lap 70, and he's hanging right with these guys in third spot. This guy's getting it, man. I'm telling you. He's learning how to do all these kinds of racetracks. We knew he would be good on road courses, and he was. And then we've seen him run well on the mile and a half. And now here it's a short track. He's, he looked so good in practice yesterday. I said he was going to be one of the cars I thought would be uh, a contender for a top five. Andy, we asked all these questions about Montoya, but just admit one thing, buddy. He's just good, isn't he? He's good. 43 car, Bobby Labonte. Good to see the petty blue collars back on a dodge. When you think of Martinsville, when you think of the 43 car, you think of the King Richard Petty, a 15-time winner here. Bobby Labonte being shown in the fourth spot. By the way, in this race a year ago, he came from 30th to finish third. And Jerry, the position he's in right now, the 43 car, Bobby Labonte, which we just saw a little while ago, he's got nobody in front or nobody behind. And as a driver at Martinsville, that's what you want. Let those brakes cool down. Let everything get cooled off. How about these two guys? The 25 car, he got penalized a while ago for a few pit road and, uh, violations. Now here he is, stays out on that last caution. He's running the top five. 
Here comes the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, all the way up to seventh spot. Getting by David Strimmy in the 40 car. Strimmy having a good run back in eighth spot. Um, Johnson pulled away a little bit. Jeff Gordon is back in 10th position, but because it's Johnson, Strimmy, and then back behind them is the 16 of Greg Biffle. Yes, right now, I don't see the 24 car of Jeff Gordon running down Jimmy Johnson. We saw Johnson catch him pretty earlier before Gordon couldn't get away from him. So this guy's got a real hot rod here. Dave? Yeah, the 48 looking very good right now, Rush. You remember last week, it didn't look so great. Spun out in the Bush Series race, spun out in the Cup race, which was even more critical. He said of it this week, I was bummed out. I spun out trying too hard. Here's a good example of him not trying too hard, working his way back up through this field, this field of traffic, after being logged back on those pit stops. Well, not much during the day. He's going to have this much room in front behind. And like I just said earlier, this is a great time for these guys to relax and breathe a little bit and not tear these cars up. And now Jeff Gordon has gone by the 16 of Biffle to take the spot away. Gordon being shown in ninth position. That's Biffle behind him in 10th. The 29 car of Kevin Harvick would be the 11th place car. The 15, by the way, of Paul Menard there is one lap down in 36th position. The guy they're chasing right now, Jeff Burton, the AT&T Chevy. 159 laps in the book. Back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Alan? And Juan Pablo Montoya pits from third place. He's got some of the yellow rubbed off the Goodyear Eagle on some of these tires. He's been in some contact out on the racetrack, Dave. Jimmy Johnson pits for four tires and a track bar adjustment numb in the center of the corner. Too much wheel I have to put to it was his complaint. Mike? Jeff Gordon has been consistently complaining about being loose in and light, uh, loose off, and has said to Steve Letarth, the changes they've made have only tightened him in the middle. They have not fixed his entry or his exit. They're going to make another chassis adjustment and four-tire change. Jeff Gordon is still on pit road as Johnson tries to beat him off, but Gordon will win the race off pit road. Wow, these guys came out almost side by side. How about Montoya gaining a couple spots? Biffle up seven. Jeff Burton, four-tire change, back two. And there's the race off of pit road, Montoya and Biffle just in front of Jeff Burton, the 31 car. Back in Martinsville, Virginia, five car, Kyle Busch being shown as a leader. He's one of the four, four cars that stayed out under this caution flag. Kyle Busch stayed out, Matt Kenseth in second spot stayed out, Jamie McMurray, and the 07 of Clint Boyer did not pit. They are first, second, third, and fourth here at lap 174. Now, some of the guys who did pit uh, came on for adjustments and tire changes. Now, Jeff, Jeff Gordon had to come back onto pit road a moment ago. Let's watch and listen to what happened with the 24 team. Tighten that left rear wheel. Tighten that left rear wheel. Come in here, nice Just tighten that left rear. Let's go. Just racing hard off pit road, these guys. Pressure's on them to try to beat somebody out let's of the field. Let's go, let's go. Coming to the green. Coming to the green. You... Guys, that was a mistake, but also a championship saving catch for that 2014, getting him back in onto the caution. Yeah, if he started this race, went back to the restart with that loose wheel, he would have had to pit down that long pit road at 30, 30 miles an hour, and uh, that would have cost him a lap or two. Well, I guarantee you right now, the left rear tire change is beating himself up pretty bad over that mistake because that was a costly one right there. We saw the two car a moment ago have trouble with just going up into the wall, and we're hearing it may have been heat related to what was happening off the brakes and the right front tire. Why don't we show you exactly what happened as we go down to our Chevy cutaway car in Tim Brewer. Thanks, Jerry. You fans at home, this is the bead of the tire. This is a very, very vulnerable part because once that bead comes away from the wheel, inflation goes down. What you have here, that's the rotor. 1,300 degrees, heat builds up radiates right through that wheel, melts the beat of that tire. That's the reason the tire goes down. Jerry? Great explanation, Tim. For more information on heat and tires, log on to ESPN.com, search word auto tech. Now, how hot does it get on those tires? Here is uh, Mark Hollywood Armstrong, the right front tire changer for the 15 car, getting his fingers taped. Even though the heat came through the gloves, it can blister those hands. Yeah, these guys grab the wheel. What they do is they, they have gloves on, but they reach inside the wheel to pull that tire off. And that wheel is bolted to that rotor, which gets up to like 1,300 degrees. And after enough laps, that wheel can get almost close to that. So, and I've had my hands burnt so many times on those wheels, I can't count. 
Andy, had they been working on those gloves a lot, trying to get more heat-sensitive gloves, get it thicker or something so they won't burn these guys' hands? It's just hard, though. The thicker you get that glove, that you don't have the sensation you need to be able to change tire spats and pick up lug nuts if they fall. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. You need to have some mobility. Lap 181, we, uh, we'll try to give you the answer to our AT&T Crew Chief Challenge, a question which Hendrick driver has the best chance of winning at Martinsville. Kyle Busch leading right now. Was it Kyle Busch, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, or Casey Mears? How did you vote? Jeff Gordon got the bulk of the votes. Jimmy Johnson second, then Kyle Busch and Casey Mears in that order. Wow, that, that's surprising. I didn't think it would be that much of a runaway to Jeff Gordon, especially since Jimmy Johnson's won here three times. He's won the race last time. But Jeff's Jeff, got some work to do, though, if he's going to get it today. He's back here in this lap traffic, and he's got a long way to go to get to the front. Jeff Gordon, a seven-time winner. Here's a lot of congestion back there. And you see the chase ticker top of your screen coming in. You see Jimmy Johnson right now would be uh, just six points back of Jeff Gordon in the chase. That's changing lap after lap now as, he, as these guys start working by. Some of these guys for position. Man, it sure has looked tough up there. You see all these guys banging into each other. Hey, you just saw that last shot right where the 12 car looks like. He got knocked sideways, jumped around. Just about ready to comment that Tony Stewart's being awful patient. He's doing a great job out there just logging laps and taking it nice and easy to get himself back in this race where he can contend for this win. He's never been out of it, but he's always logged back in that traffic. Take a look at the back of the 11 car. Something uh, dangling back there. I think he's got part of that lower bumper area. It's gotten torn loose from some contact. It's like a little small strip though. Yeah, it's just a, it's a small strip of fiberglass or aluminum. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think it's part of the fiberglass rear fascia, that lower lip yeah. area. And that won't hurt anything whatsoever. I'd be surprised if NASCAR took any action out of that at all. Oh, trouble on the racetrack again here for the seventh time. Michael Waltrip in the 55 car, his Toyota looped around. He had trouble in the opening practice session. Very first lap, he had a little contact with the wall. They had to repair this car. Yeah, Jerry had a crash in practice right off the bat, tore the car up, and then he got lapped right off the bat in this race, and now he's spun out. Really having a lot of problems at number 55 today. It's like he just loses the car getting in the corner, very similar to the way he did in practice. Looks like he maybe has too much rear brake in the car. Friday practice session, he was struggling a little bit. Right off the bat, he comes into this corner. You see, he just locks the rear wheels up, slides it up in the wall. Crew had to do some repair. And today, here's what happened up in the corner. Again, the car goes up, and he has contact with the wall up high. He's wearing that left rear out. It almost looked a little bit like practice, where the car just locks the rear wheels up and spins around. Hold the brake, hold the brake, hold the brake. Out. Michael only competing in his 13th race thus far here in 2007. Back with more from Martinsville Speedway. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Of NASCAR Nextel Cup Series on ABC, the Subway 500. Brought to you by Subway. Subs that are full flavored and delicious. Subway restaurants satisfy the craving. Subway, eat fresh. Chevy, an American revolution. And Aflac, ask about it at work. Back at Martinsville Speedway, listen to the 99 radio, Carl Edwards. Uh, something ain't right with the motor. We got no holes. No holes. Switch batteries, bud. Switch batteries. All right, we got holes now. Have to shut, uh, shut your AC off and start shutting your fans down, bud, so we can make the race here. And Carl Edwards just came on the radio and said he has 10 volts on the one battery. He's going to run it as long as he can, and then he's going to switch it over. We got to watch the 99, guys. Thanks, Jamie. Uh Batteries uh, concern here with a lot of voltage draining these cars from all the fans and blowers to keep the brakes cool. Al Bush, one of the cars that did not pit behind him, Kenseth, Montoya, and McMurray. Remember, those four cars stayed out on our uh, on the caution flag back on lap 166. Andy, right now is not the time to talk about it, but I want to revisit this battery issue a little bit later on in this broadcast because 
There's some things going on with batteries. I just do not understand why they're running so small batteries in these cars. Especially with this Roush group, because the 17 car had the same issue. Seems like it was last week. And uh, just had, you know, they've had a lot of problems with this. How about making transitions in terms of drivers? Juan Pablo Montoya in that 42 car, he won at Monaco and Monte Carlo. And now he's trying to win at Martinsville. Let's uh, talk about a transition. <laughs> he is really impressive. I, 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 I just can't believe just how many times I've said that this year. But he was going for second spot before that caution came out. Uh, Dario Franchitti is going to be his teammate next year, past Indianapolis 500 champion, and I can't think of a better fellow to help Dario than Juan Pablo Montoya. This is just going to be an incredible tutor for him. Alan? Hey, Doc, talk about getting your indoctrination into NASCAR. Walked into a local pizza place that's been a favorite among racers in Martinsville for years last night, and sitting at a table in the corner, Dario Franchitti, Juan Pablo Montoya, and Tony Glover, the longtime crew chief and now team manager for Ganassi Racing, they're getting the update on everything Martinsville, not just racing, but all of the local best spots to go to. Dave? And a guy who knows the local Missouri hotspots as well as Martinsville. Right behind him, Jamie McMurray. And no short tracks as well. Crew chief Larry Carter telling me this morning, this place is one of those places sort of like road courses. Some guys like them, some guys don't. Some guys do very well, some guys don't. Jamie's very well-rounded, and he does well at Martinsville. Indeed he does. He's been, he's run awfully well here. Top tens in three of the last five times he's been here. Now we talked about the, the, the drains by the batteries here on these cars and how many blowers. What all do you have running off the battery here at a place like Martin's? Well, to answer that question, let's go down to our Chevy cutaway car and Tim Brewer. Jerry, I just counted these fan blowers on here. Folks, there's one, two, three, four on each front wheel. There's an engine fan. There's two of these on the rear of each wheel, as well as two on the rear end cooler. There's a lot of power being drained from that battery. I'll tell you what, it's pretty devastating here at Martinsville today. Yeah, thank you. I love having that ESPN Dish Tech Center so you can go down there and see exactly what you need to be able to see at home. For more information on batteries, log on to ESPN.com. Search word know-how. Well, the problem with the battery going down right now, you see it's running all those blowers that cools the brakes. And the most important thing in Martinsville, Virginia, is the brakes. So what do you do then, Andy? <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta keep the car running. So first you have to just turn off some blowers. You heard him say the first one they wanted him to turn off was his air conditioning unit. <laughs> you know, he's <laughs> suffering a little bit for that. But uh, you have to keep the car running. So even if you have to turn off the brake blowers and take it easy on the brakes, you, you just gotta do what you have to do. And that's, uh, when that happens, then the driver, driver's just gotta get out of the gas a little bit early. Maybe the start finish line and coast it into the corner to take care of the brakes. His only way to fix it now is come down pit road on a caution flag and actually change the battery. You put another one in there, it's, it's all charged up again. We've seen bumping and rubbing during the race under green, but we also saw just a few minutes ago under the yellow flag. Now watch what happened here with the eight car and the 20 and some others here under the caution flag. Ooh, looks like Junior got a little mad right there. Mike? Guys, maybe just a little bit of a, a sign of how bad Dale Jr. wants to get to victory lane. It's been 57 races since he scored a win, and right now it looks like he's just about ready to do anything it takes to get there. Let's listen into his radio. He thinks to be fair, even if it's a damn foot, you can't come down on him or you can't, can't run your damn line. He's just going to stay there. I'm sick of it. Yeah, 10-4. I think Tony's just an angry witness. <laughs> and just to update you on the electrical situation with the eight car, Dale Jr. radioed in not too long ago saying that it seems to be improving, but he's still lagging a little bit on the straightaway. Andy, I'm taking a look at the front fenders on this eight car. It looks like they're knocked in a little bit. I notice a lot of drivers on caution flags, when they come down, the pit crews jump over with baseball bats and try to roll the fenders out. And, uh, that's a pretty simple tool to use, though, isn't it? They're going to need to use a, ba a baseball bat on this one on all four corners, it looks like. The junior's got a good car, but he sure has used up the fenders on it. He's had guys bounce off him all day long, bounce off the left side, bounce off the right side. Look at his left rear quarter panel. He's even got hit there, but that car's running pretty fast right now with all that damage. Yeah, he's going for eight spot right here under Bobby Labonte. Mike mentioned he's tired of getting hit and bumped, bounced off of, and he's tired of losing. Here's the 11 car that pops him in the corner, Denny Hamlin. Uh, now we know where the left rear damage came from. <laughs> Bill's getting fired up, though. Hey, getting mad and chewing through some of these cars. You see him slide, up, slide it sideways off that corner. Well, you, 
We can be mad. mad if, yeah, we can be mad if it had been 57 races since you've been to Victory Lane. As good as your cars have been and as good as you are. I mean, last win for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Richmond in May of 2006. Well, it's, it's not because of his driving, that's for sure. They've had some engine problems this year while he's been running the top five. Missed the chase for the championship. And now with five to go, he just wants to salvage this year and get some wins. That's the most important thing that he's trying to do at the moment. 292 laps to go. We are moving toward the halfway point. Kyle Busch, our leader at Martinsville Speedway. Mired back in traffic, so Jeff Gordon's trying to work his way and weave his way back to the front. He's coming, but he's having a difficult time. But Gordon dominated much of the day, started on the pole and leading the point standings right now, Doc. Indeed, Susie, under caution again here, eight time, lap 214 to Breel and Racetrack. You saw a moment ago. Here comes Kyle Bush and some of the guys who did not pit on lap 166 as we head down to pit road and Jamie Little. And Jeff Burton, who led some laps here for the first time in the chase, brings it on down. They just need a little track bar adjustment going down four tires and fuel. He started 18th. He maintains that fourth spot. Let's go to Allen. Kyle Bush did not pit on the last caution, got some track position, was the leader. Now watch when he leaves. He'll have to swing around Tony. Tony Stewart will be just getting to his pit if Tony came on to pit road. Maybe they're going to get a break here. Four time change for this five car in some traffic, Dave. Championship contender Jimmy Johnson's car was not good that time. Very loose. Air out of the right rear to try to fix that this time, Mike. Race off of pit road. Uh, there they come. As you see, uh, Bobby Labonte up six spots. Reed Sorensen likewise. Kyle Busch back two. Mears up five. Clint Boyer gains nine positions and Biffle back four. Okay. How did uh, Bobby Labonte gain six spots? How about two tires as you take a look from the vantage point of Tim Sheets out of Indianapolis, Indiana? Front tire changer. Tim says Andy Petrie taught me how to change front tires, and he gave him a big break, and obviously that break working really well for Bobby Labonte on that pit stop. He does a great job right there. I don't know if I taught him how to do all that, but uh, he looked good. They take the credit right now, but hey, one thing I'm really liking out here right now. Do what? I'm not liking this at 31. Well, you said 31 commitment line violation. 31 car commitment line violation. Let's take a look at this. a little this. common sense. Trying to make pit road a little safer. And uh, appreciate the common sense. Well, we've got this commitment line. It's a pretty good ways back. It's actually on the racetrack. You see these guys coming by. You have to have your left side tires on that line. Yeah, he was letting the 16 car go by. It looks like he said he was trying to use some common sense and not uh, crowd the 16. There's the white line right there in front of the guy waving the green flag. Watch yeah, the this commitment. This is it right here. He was giving, look like he was giving Biffle some room. Yeah, right. absolutely. As Jeff said the same thing. Would you give him some room? This is such a tight pit uh, road. I'm not so sure about that. They, they could have been undecided about whether they were going to pit or not. And, uh, you know. Oh, come on. Give me the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> well, I'm just going to call them like I see them. Okay, I was just getting ready to comment before all this happened. The 20 <laughs> cars stayed out. Now, Tony Stewart's up in the third position. He's been mired back in traffic all day long. He's probably feeling really good about getting up front finally. Let's go down to Jamie Little and check in on what really happened with the 31, Jamie. Well, Jeff Burton continued talking after you guys showed that, and he said, you know, I'm just trying to do the right thing and make pit road safer and give a little bit of room to Greg Biffle, and he said, the heck with that. I'm not making it safer anymore. I'm going to do what I want to do. Let's go to Dave. Jamie, a lot of drivers stayed out during this caution period. Jimmy Johnson might have been one of them, but it's so tight calling into the pits on that backstretch. Listen. I'd like to stay out. I'm going to leave it up to you here. How bad is it? Late. I hit the commit line. It's all right. Yeah, already on pit road. Before they could change their mind, Jimmy had already hit the commitment line and had made his way toward pit road, but they think they'll be okay just racing deeper in the pack. Getting set for the restart. Montoya, the leader, let's listen in as we go full throttle.
Whoa, broad slide there. Lap 222, complete of 500. Montoya, Earnhardt Jr., Stewart, who stayed out as you ride along with Tony Stewart, look at the eight car. Remember, they had the little bumping shunt there during the uh, caution flag a couple of cautions ago. You saw that 16 and 31 car coming into the pit area a while ago with, and Jeff Burton get penalized. One thing that these guys could have been doing was that they, yeah, they're pitted uh, in front of behind each other. And so Jeff may have been letting the 16 pass him so they wouldn't have to. You see how these pit stalls are? That way they could come into their pit stall straight. And I think that's what Jeff was referring to when he said he wanted to make pit road safer. Instead of coming in in front of the 16 and having that and getting blocked in, they were just going to swap spots back there on the back stretch. Well, that makes sense. That would make it a lot safer for both of them to be able to get onto pit road. Yeah, that's a tough call. There's a lot of negotiating you have to do with pit road, getting on it, and these small pit boxes are just tight, tight. Short track racing. That puts Burton all the way back in 33rd position. With these guys here, he's chasing Montoya. And prior to that caution flag, the eight car, Russell, you pointed out a moment ago, was the fastest car on the racetrack. Yeah, Here's the eight car. Dale Jr.'s been quirking and anybody, whoa! And that's what happens when you run out of room just so close to the curb. He just had to keep going. He got in the side of the 42 of Montoya. Montoya did a great job not to spin the car out right there, but I know he's mad as a bull. Earnhardt Jr. moving in on the 42 car. First time he's led today here again is the pass and the contact. No, he didn't even hit the curb. He just got up a little high. It actually run in the side of the 42 of Montoya. So it's pretty aggressive driving, trying to get in there. Got, probably got in a little too hot. He couldn't slow the thing down enough. Tony Stewart says, thank you very much. I'm going to drive right on through here. Let's check in with the Earnhardt pit with Mike. Well, Doc, you know, I had a pretty interesting conversation with Dale Earnhardt Jr. earlier this week asking him about the winless drought that he's in right now. And he admitted to me that he's gotten extremely frustrated without being able to win. So much, in fact, that he feels like it's forced him to become impatient and has forced him to make mistakes and overdrive the car at times. He said at one point this season he really had to start asking himself some very difficult questions as to whether or not he really needed to settle down behind the wheel of that race car. He told me he's addicted to getting the victory lane and he's desperate to get back there before the end of the year. Right now, he just came over the radio not too long ago saying just the opposite of what he said earlier today. He said the car's pretty sporty, Doc. The car's very sporty, Mike, but he's he's still overdriving it a little bit, in my opinion. I see him sliding off almost every corner. He's fast right now, but that can take his toll, can't it? And he had to work on the cars a lot. A little beating and banging to get around these guys, and now he's up front. We talked earlier about how they need to settle in now. Just slow down a little bit, calm down, because now you got the lead, and that's probably what his crew chief's telling him. Back in the spring when he led, he ended up leading 137 laps, the most laps of the day here. So once he got there, he stayed there for quite a while. How about our Ford lap leaders today? Jeff Gordon has led the most laps thus far. Jeff Burton led 51. Kyle Busch, you see Juan Pablo Montoya, Jimmy Johnson, and now Dale Earnhardt Jr. has led six laps. Jeff Green also being credited with leading a lap today. Six lead changes among seven different leaders. 232 laps in the books. Back with more from Martinsville after these messages and a word from our ABC station. Welcome back to the Subway 500 at Martinsville Speedway, the smallest, tightest, toughest track in NASCAR. 240 of 500 laps complete, six lead changes, seven leaders, eight cautions. With this, the sixth race in the chase for the next Dell Cup, we get up to speed on our 12 chase drivers, beginning with Alan Bessman. And beginning with Tony Stewart, who's he was running in second spot, got that position after a little pitch strategy played by crew chief Greg Zivinelli. They pitted at lap 168, then did not hit at 216. He started 34th, he's running second, and they're good on fuel till about lap 305. David? Come back to the top five, Martin Truex Jr. Two reasons, he stayed out on this last caution as well, but before that, they had finally gotten their car back to its quick form here on the track. A couple of chassis adjustments, and Chrissy Bonomanian was happy with what they'd done for the one. Jamie? Well, what a rebound for Denny Hamlin in the 11 car, guys. He started 30th. He had that left front damage that he got uh, from getting into some cars earlier in the race. They came down pit road four times, including a pit road violation. They stayed out under that last caution, guys, and they got that track position. He's now moved up to fourth. Mike? After a costly error, cost Jeff Gordon valuable track position, he restarted 33rd. But right now, he's up inside the top five, and crew chief Steve Letarte has been giving this team pep talks over the last 
last several laps, reminding them that there's more than half this race left, and they feel like they've got the best race car driver here in Martinsville. Alan? At Gordon's Hendrick teammate Kyle Busch, his crew played a little uh, pitch strategy as well, did not pit at lap 168, led from there until the caution at 214 for debris. Kyle pitted at that point, fell back to 12th. He's moved his way up to 7th now. Same deal for Matt Kenseth. No track condition all day, so they played the strategy game. No pit at 168, pitted at 216. He ran second in between those pit stops, and Matt Kenseth is 10th right now. Okay. Jimmy Johnson pitted this last time. This week, he's been pretty happy with the car. He said, I think we're in good shape during final practice yesterday. The car's better, and we're smarter in the spring. We walked away from final practice frustrated, so a turnaround in attitude, and the car is doing well. Jamie? And Carl Edwards continues to struggle with that alternator issue. He just switched batteries. That battery has about 12 and a half volts left. Now, we saw this happen with Matt Kenseth at Dover, guys. A half of a race. Matt Kenseth at Dover, guys. Now, we have a half of a race left. I don't know if it's going to hold up for Carl Edwards. Alan? Uh, Clint Boyer, the third-place driver. Oh, caution flag is out, and this is going to change some things around, too. Debris on the racetrack will bring out caution for the ninth time today, the 07 car you see there. Glenn Boyer back in 15th spot, Harvick back in 17th for the remainder of the Chasers, and Jeff Burton back in 20th position. Part of a bumper bar brace there laying up on the top of the racetrack. Not too surprising to see a bumper bar lay on yeah, the track. I started to say, a lot of times the fans say, there's no debris on the racetrack. Well, folks, that's a lot of debris right there. That's a whole rear bumper could have been off this 70 car because he had his uh, the fiberglass part knocked off earlier and I guess looks like maybe somebody knocked the reinforcement off the, that time. See, part of the rear bumper still hanging on there. Take a bit of a break for the 31 car of Jeff Burden because he had come all the way from 33rd back up to 20th position because of that commitment cone violation. Now they're going to head back on the pit road once again. Jamie Little. Well, Denny Hamlin coming down pit road. Mike Ford, his crew chief, asked him if he needs more forward fighting. And Denny said, I don't know. You do what you think you need. So they're going to do an air pressure adjustment and four tires for Denny Hamlin. Alan? And Tony Stewart pits a little adjustment on the left rear jacking bolt for the wedge. They're going to make a four tire change here. Tony reporting his car not too bad at this point. Dave? While the car is better for Martin Truex Jr., just a little bit too loose for him to make an air pressure adjustment and change four tires. Mike? Dale Earnhardt Jr., extremely happy with his race car right now. No major chassis adjustments. Just an air pressure adjustment and four tires on the eight cars. They go to work on the left side. They drop the jack and he's away. Arnhart Jr. rocketing off. True X. You see the 20 car of Stewart. And Jeff Gordon speeding off right in front of one Pablo Montoya. So True X gains a couple of spots. Gordon up Montoya. Scott Riggs up four positions. Denny Hamlin back four. And you see the remainder of the top 10 racing off of pit road. Back with a restart in a moment. ESPN's coverage of NASCAR Nextel Cup Series on ABC, the Subway 500. Brought to you by Allstate. Go online to see real race fans hanging out with a not-so-real Casey Kane. Pennzoil Platinum, full synthetic motor oil with adaptive molecules. And Chevy, an American revolution. Things happen in a hurry here on a short track in Martinsville, Virginia. Now, how did the one car, Martin Truex, pick up a couple of spots on that uh, pit stop a moment ago? We'll show you courtesy of David Collins, the front tire changer, young man out of Riverside, California. Picked up two spots. David, an extreme athlete motocross racer and kickboxer now for tony stewart it wasn't quite as fortunate yeah take a look at the right front corner here the tire changer is going to get the stop done throw the tire off put the other one back on gets ready to take off and the hose is hung on the right front splitter costs some valuable time does a good job recovering though getting that thing back up and got back up on his feet you see they're both done almost identical and out although he did lose one position on that thing. 
Nine caution flags, 56 laps. Kyle Busch, uh, the leader. Bobby Labonte in second spot. Sorensen third and Kenza fourth. As the pace car is pulled away, we will listen in as we go full throttle for the restart. All right, coming to green. 26 will be catching about when you get it. You're ready. Racetrack keeps it out of the concrete. Come on, babe. Yeah, you saw the 41 car stack up. You saw the 99 Carl car would slide up there. Brakes are hot. I couldn't get it stopped. And we're hearing now that the brakes on the 26 car, Jamie McMurray, is starting to fail also. So a lot of problems starting to happen. And we're only halfway into this race, guys. One thing that happened right here to this 99 car is he's talking about his brakes were hot. And what happens is it boils that brake fluid and makes the pedal go to the floor. 41, Reed Swords in the slow. We were talking about the 26. And whoa, whoa, the 18 car, J.J. Yaley, a lot of smoke. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right in behind him, and the caution will, will be waved again for the 10th time. Man, it's like this last restart. Uh oh Johnson's got a little bit of damage here. That's not going to hurt him, though. He just needs to monitor that, Andy. It's just no damage, just a grill knocked out. That happened as a part of the chain reaction on the restart. We heard the 26 car had a right rear brake issue. They stacked up. As we will show you again, what happened on the restart a moment ago as they were coming down for the green flag? Everything looks normal here. You see these guys coming off, off this corner. And something happens. Well, it looks like right here at this 41 car just didn't get going. And all these guys just start piling into the back of each other. Edwards gets by on the inside beneath the 17 of Kenseth, but now watch the 99 car up across the track. City, his brake pedal went soft there. His brakes were hot. He didn't have any brakes when he went in there to hit them. You see the 18 kind of file in right there behind Carl. And then right here, it looks like the engine just blows up. That's it coming out of the exhaust pipes. Oh, look like at Dale Jr. In. Couldn't even see, Andy. Yeah, he got stuck in that smoke and almost got up in the wall. That was a good save by him. He's yeah. probably blinded by the smoke. There's a ton of smoke came out of the pipes of this car. It's like right. one of those Days of Thunder movies, Jerry. Yeah, you right can't see nothing, two. you know? Now from the one car of Truex, who was also behind this engine problem. Tire smoke. Come on, blowing up in front of you. Blowing up in front of you. Come on through here. Come on. Come on. Winding smoke, but Earnhardt stays out on the wall. Back in a moment, you're watching ESPN on ABC. Back at Martinsville Speedway here for the Subway 500. Caution for the 10th time of day. The 18 uh, car, J.J. Yaley blowing an engine. Reed Sorensen is walking away from his Dodge after he had trouble on the restart. They have taken it back to the garage area. A lot of fluid trailing out of the back of that car. There's the engine that let go. Uh, presumptive with the engine let go for J.J. Yaley. He's also in the garage area. What about the issues with brakes? As we head down to our ESPN Dish Tech Center to explain it, here's Tim Brewer. Hey, one of the issues today, when they cut these brake blower fans off, no air moving through here, you don't cool the fluid. Weakest point in the brake system is the fluid. When you boil that fluid behind this piston right here, you're out of business because when you reach over to hit that brake pedal, it goes to the floors, you don't have any brakes. No brakes here at Martinsville pretty much the end of the day. Jerry? Thank you, Tim. Boy, that uh, brake fluid, you heard guys for years, for decades, talking about boiling that brake fluid. And once it boils, you got nothing. All right, Mike is caught up uh, with J.J. Yaley, who just stepped out of the 18 car. Mike? And Doc, obviously disappointed after expectations were pretty high coming into today, but what did you feel just before the car blew? Uh, just I was getting into turn one, I started to feel a small vibration, and uh, I thought for a second, man, I was having a brake problem, but I uh, looked at the rearview mirror, and you could see some smoke coming out, so uh, it most likely it broke a piston, some that long line, uh, I don't think it's got a big hole in it, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the interstate battery car was pretty decent there, but uh, we're blown up now, it's just what it is, you start getting excited, and uh, you know, we got the car, we're starting to drive good again, I got real, real tight in the center, and uh, it was definitely dicey uh, racing out there in the middle of the field. I was having fun. Dicey, that's uh, pretty much par for the course here at Martinsville, isn't it, Doc? It certainly is, Mike, and certainly heard a disappointment. He was having a good run. J.J. hoping to be able to finish the year in the 18 car, maybe get him a couple more top five finishes. Well, let's check out our All-State Good Hands move of the race, and it goes to the one car of Martin Truex Jr. Now, watch the uh, engine erupt. You can see nothing in front of that windshield, and somehow... 
Truex is able to get underneath the eight car and not have any contact. Different angle now from our Goodyear blimp. You see, watch the one car. And he can't, he can't see a thing and gets through it. So he's our Allstate good hands move with the race on behalf of Martin Truex Jr. Allstate will donate $1,000 to the Urban Youth Racing School. Good move, Martin. Getting through that without getting the car damaged. Now, what about the issue with the 99 car, Carl Leverage, and the brake problem? Jamie Little? Well, Doc, what's happening with that is he's trying to shut down as much power as he can to conserve those batteries to make it to the end of the race. So one of those is the brake fans. So he's shutting off those brake fans, so there's nothing cooling him down. So what happens? Well, you saw on that restart, he tried to get in there and put on the brakes. He had no brakes. He had to avoid the accident. And so he came on the radio and said, guys, that wasn't me being aggressive. That was me trying to stop the car. So Bob Osborne, his crew chief, just came over the radio and said, okay, this is what you got to do before this next restart. Lightly tap your brake pedal before the green. It'll get those fluids going, and you'll get some brake pressure built back up. So hopefully you can put the brakes on next time. Doc? All right. Uh, trying to get those brakes back where they'll work. Tough break there. No pun intended for Carl Edwards. Back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Come back to Martinsville, Virginia. That's the five car. Kyle Busch now pulling away over Bobby Labonte back in second spot. Kenseth in the 17 car is third. Biffle fourth and Clint Bull. This is the left rear quarter panel, the 41 car of Reed Sorensen. Reed's got a blown engine there and barely misses him. Now that could have been big for Boyer. Alan? And Rusty, let's update the race position that this 07 car is in. He got up to the front of the pack because they did not pit under the caution at lap 249 when a lot of the other guys did. So these guys are going to hope for about a 30, 40 lap run with no yellow flag and then a caution so that before they would have to stop under the green for fuel, everybody will want to come in for tires and it will help them keep their track position. They fought all day to get up front. And that 48 car, that's the one that Gil Martin is using as his gauge. He said, we're on the same strategy with them. We can't be in that bad of shape right now. Well, it's got to be a pretty good move for him because Boyer's been, he's been back in traffic all day long, but a lot of these fellows throughout the day have different pitch strategy, Andy. Some of them are staying out, some are pitting, and you just can't get any prediction who's going to stay leading this thing right now. And what's getting ready to happen is 225 laps to go right now. You're going to see these guys position themselves for that last 130, 140 laps of this race so they don't have to make a pit stop and they can keep that track position. You're going to see that development here later. Speaking of positioning, take a look at our chase ticker at the top of your screen there. Actually, right just below the race ticker there, you see that the 48 car and the 07 now moving in a little bit. 39 points back for Johnson, 59 for Boyer as they're starting to close in on that 24 car who's mired back in some traffic there. Take a look at the 70 car, Johnny Sauter. He's lost the rear bumper. He's lost the whole back of the car. Lost the left rear tire. Look where he's running right now, Andy. He's in 11th. <laughs> Unbelievable. 11th place with all that damage. We've been talking a lot about Johnny Sauter this year. He's done a great job. Another kid looking for a ride next year, it sounds like. He loses a few, few more parts, he might be leading. <laughs> car would be lighter than right? that. Should yeah. run faster. Now, what's NASCAR going to say? when the car's a little light on weight because it's missing body parts. They're going to say you're a little light. <laughs> That's what you're going to say. They will. Yes, wow. sir. Oh, Juan Pablo Montoya getting a little racy. So is a 24 car trying to get up on the high side of the 31 of Jeff Burton. Justin, I've been Mr. Nice Guy enough today. They got me in trouble on pit road. I'm not, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Looks Burton. like he meant it, too. That's one thing I'm starting to see happening right now with all these cars. They're all really loose. Look at the 42 of Montoya loose there but they're all starting to have brake problems. The brakes are just not stopping near as good. A lot of guys are really glowing the rotors. A lot of heat. A lot of problems starting to happen. Now watch from the onboard camera of Jeff Burton. Watch the contact a moment ago. It was a 24 car both right up in front of him. Oh, yeah. See, that's another problem right there where Jeff just can't get that car to slow air. down quick Still enough. There. Coming back on you. Clear, all clear. Out of way, buddy. Out of way. 24, 31. Another two on the inside. There's Gordon on the inside. Contact with Jeff Burton. And then Montoya right behind him. He's trying to hang on. Ooh, he's tight right there. Oh. Look at that curve was right Still. there. Jeff couldn't Still get any lower. 31 car was coming down and bam. No harm, no foul, though. He didn't spin out. 
Boy, this 42 car of Juan Pablo Montoya, he feels like a pinball out there. He's got hit every lap, sideways, all over the racetrack, and still going. And he's still driving the wheels. You think he grew up on the dirt track somewhere instead of growing up in open wheel competition, running all over IndyCar and Formula One. Now we told you earlier about what happens when a bead melts on the right front of a car from all that brake heat. We saw the two cars open the wall. Well, they told us that's exactly what happened. And our Tim Brewer has the tire that came off the two car. Tim? You're exactly right, Jerry. Folks, this is the outside bead of the right front tire. Pretty good shape, right? This is the inside oh. bead. That is literally melting the bead of a tire, Jerry. Wow, and Tim, how did you get that tire so fast <laughs> off the two car? He had to go through the tunnel, around up to our disc tech center. That is an amazing shot, guys. Thanks, but uh, Hollywood, he ran in, and Stu Grant told me I could have the first one and melted. Here it is, folks. Unbelievable. Well, that's a great presentation. That's what happens when you get too much heat in the brakes. So just a reminder, it was not a Goodyear tire issue. It was a heat issue with regard to the brakes there uh, on the right front. Take a look at our sprint speed lap here in the 20 car. Tony Stewart talking about being fast. Here's a guy who wants to sprint his way toward the front. Last time by, almost 91 and a half miles per hour. And the leader's last lap for Kyle Busch, uh, about a mile an hour slower than Tony Stewart. So Tony's on the move now. 213 laps to go. He's about a half a lap behind the five car, but running that quickly, he should be able to get there, you know, with plenty of time to spare. 287 laps in the books. Ken's of Biffle, Johnson, Bobby the Body, and Kyle Busch. Packed house here in Martinsville, Virginia, and the sixth car, our highest running rookie, David Reagan. Still is our highest running rookie, by the way. He loops it around, does a complete Joey Chitwood style 360 down in turn two, and gets it going back in the right direction and loses just a few spots. He was being shown in the top 10. Now he'll drop back to 15th. What's the six car? Whoop, got a little help. Looks, yeah, looks like he did. He got some help from Brian Newman right there. I don't know if they had something going on earlier, but it looks like, uh, looks like Ryan just got into the back of him. Yeah, I don't think Ryan did that on purpose. Just got a little hot and spun him out, but. Man, you got to hand it to David Reagan for the way he spun that car out. Just kept on going, threw a little smoke out, made it look real cool. Didn't hardly lose anything. Jamie? And Greg Biffle, guys, running top five most of this race. He's coming in, no adjustments needed, just four tires. Actually, they're going to they're gonna wave him off and keep him out, guys. Let's go down to Allen. And Kyle Busch is in. They stopped him a little short in his box so that if Tony Stewart hits, he has enough room to swing out around him. A fourth tire change and an adjustment on the five car. And watch the traffic as he pulls away. Long stop, trouble on the front, on the left. Kyle Busch losing track position. 07 also battling out behind the 99 car. Martin Truex getting his service. He's down and away. As there comes uh, Jeff Burton by Truex, and they're going around by Johnny Sauter. Race off of pit road. Here on the 11th caution flag today, Ryan Newman up four spots. You see there, Kyle Busch back three, Edwards up. Boyer back a couple. And Scott Riggs gains two positions. By the way, Jimmy Johnson stayed on the racetrack, as did several others, including Greg Biffle and Kevin Harvey. Back to the Subway 500, Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. The 48 stayed out, as did Greg Biffle and Kevin Harvey. Guys, good call, bad call, or iffy? Well, it's a little iffy on the 48, in my opinion. He's, it's been 80 laps since he pitted, and uh, he stayed out. So, I mean, he can only go maybe 130, 40 laps. Guys, i got to speculate just a little bit. I think these guys are dying for track position so bad, they're just kind of rolling the dice a little bit here. Trying to get that car up front, keep it up there, Andy. That shows you just how important it is these guys that have track position. They're going to gamble that they're going to have a caution when they need it. Remember, Jimmy Johnson got that bruised nose in the front of his Chevy on one of the previous restarts, so he didn't want to be back there in, in the lines where you can get those chain reaction accidents. Actually, the top three cars last pitted on lap 217. Here we're working lap 300. Take a look at the 26 car there, Jamie McMurray. I was watching him earlier, and those brakes are really giving him a problem. He's getting beat pretty big time because of just three-wheel brakes. The right rear's plugged off in that car. How about
about the 49 car, give a call to John Andretti, who won here driving for the King Richard Petty. In fact, that was John's last victory at this racetrack. He has been very good here over the years. Andretti won uh, back in April of 1999, some 307 races to go. 16 car Biffle letting Jimmy Johnson know he wants by. Yeah, this is a race for just a position here, and Biffle wants to win this race too. Now, this is where a guy like Biffle really doesn't care about a championship. He's just wanting a victory right now. That's a dangerous man right there. Doesn't have anything to lose. You see Johnson gives him plenty of room down there too. Greg Biffle just got married on Wednesday in South Carolina in a hurry to get to his honeymoon. Let's go down to Jamie. And I think so far it's working well for him. Running second at his track, he said it's definitely not his favorite. He's never finished better than 17. Right now, battling for the lead. His new wife, Nicole Munders, they've been together for eight years. Got married on Wednesday in South Carolina. Now, what happened on that last pit stop quickly, guys? Greg Irwin, his crew, she told him to pit too late. He missed the commitment cone. So he's out there battling for the lead right now. Doc? Greg Biffle, we mentioned uh, he's the NASCAR newlywed. Right now trying to become the NASCAR leader here, although he's dropping back somewhat to Jimmy Johnson. I saw Jack Rouse sitting on his pit box, and I asked Jack, I said, what pit box do you normally sit on? And he said, the 16. I said, why? And he goes, I don't know. Just always have sat on that pit box. You got five teams out there. 29 and 20 car, that's Harvick and Stewart battling for third position. Actually, you got Harvick, Stewart, Gordon, and Hamlin, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Looks like Tony Stewart's got this car handled a lot better. Looks like the front end's pretty good on it, but Gordon's just a little bit better right now. Looks like Tony's going to duck in behind him. Look how smoothly Jeff Gordon just drove and ate that 20 car and just came right up in front of him. Looks like a little give and take there. I think Tony Stewart just gave him that spot, knowing he was a little faster. You know, I've been watching his track position for a while here right now, and Stewart's in the top five. He's in fifth. You got Gordon in fourth. Harvick, Biffle, Johnson now for leading this race. I'm impressed with Gordon, how he's been able to you know, re rebound from that one little incident he had where the left rear tire was, wheel was loose. They came in and had to tighten it back up, started in the rear. And now they've just methodically worked their way back up into, the, into contention. Yeah, for the folks who just joined our coverage, that was back on lap 171 where he had to come back in under the caution flag and get that lug nut tightened. And from 33rd, now back all the way up to fourth position. And Jeff's sitting in a pretty good spot. He last pitted on lap 250, so he's got quite a bit more fuel in the tank than these guys, the three guys in front of him. You know, he, he just clears Harvick right here. Andy, we were talking about brake problems with a lot of these teams, not real efficient, but every single time I've watched this 24 car of Jeff Gordon run here, this is one of the teams that never seems like he has problems. Yeah, well, I talked to Steve Letard about that in the garage this morning. He said that they have a system here where they need to run about 150 laps of basically no brakes or being real easy on the brakes. And they count them off. They count it off and say, okay, I've got a, I've done 100. I need about 50 more. So a little bit of brake management going on there. 17, 8, and 5, 11, 12th, and 13th. Let's uh, more on the Earnhardt car, Mike. Well, Doc, at times today, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has looked strong and other times incredibly weak. He's been struggling with horsepower problems throughout the course of the afternoon. And after what he's been through so far in 2007 with engine problems, it seems like that frustration is coming to a head. I'm telling you, man, I'm about sick of this motor. I mean, have y'all got anything I can run the rest of the year that's just some old sweet no ain't going to break? I'm serious. I mean, see, I mean, unless y'all don't mind it, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mind it quite a bit myself. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it either. And the 18 not holding out a heck of a lot of optimism that this car might come back to life. They just told them not too long ago to hold on. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had seven DNFs in 2007. Six of those have been engine related, so you can imagine the frustration that he has had this season. For more information on crew communications, you can log on to ESPN.com, search word communications. That's got to get old, guys. Yeah, it definitely gets old. I mean, as a driver, you get so frustrated because he was leading the race. In fact, dominating the race at one point, all of a sudden another engine related problem. I mean, he is just getting killed in the straightaway right now. I don't know what's wrong with the engine. Yeah, we were looking at his telemetry earlier. It looked to me like the throttle was going wide open. It showed on our telemetry the throttle only going about three-quarters of the way wide open. And I, I don't know if that could be it, but that's kind of the way it's running right now. We saw some issues like that earlier uh, in the year with, with one of the other cars. Had a throttle leakage problem. I think it was Kurt Busch. So you see here, he's on the straightaway. That throttle should be completely wide open uh, as soon as he hits the straight part of the racetrack. 
So here they'll just work the throttle. It does go wide open, it looks like right there, but as he comes down the straightaway, you know, it just doesn't quite go all the way over to the, to the uh, right-hand side. Now, could that be something as simple as a throttle stop that's located on the floorboard that's maybe not adjusted right or vibrated itself longer so the gas pedal can't go all the way in? Well, as long as I've been racing, I've seen everything. It could be any of that. Still hanging on pretty tough trying to battle the 17 car. That is 412th position, so given the fact that he may not have full throttle, still trying to hang in the top 15, although you see him sort of sluggish up off the corner of the 17, pulling him down the straightaway. 183 laps remaining here at Martinsville, Virginia. Jimmy Johnson has won two in a row, trying to win three in a row. The last driver to do that here at Martinsville, go way back to 1994, one Rusty Wallace, won three in a row. Jimmy Johnson trying to get it done here with less than 200 laps to go. Aerial coverage of Martinsville Speedway brought to you by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for over 50 years. 325 of 500 laps complete the story of the sixth race in the chase in our Pepsi race rundown. Points leader Jeff Gordon on the pole and dominated early. Led the first 108 laps. He was really checked out. Just out running that clean air. He has a super fast race car today. The two forces here. Jeff Gordon has won seven times. Jimmy Johnson has won the last two. And early on, they were battling. Jimmy Johnson showed a lot of strength. Got up and under his teammate Jeff Gordon. Jeff gave him a little bit of room down, uh, down low. He took advantage and took off. And these two are one, two again. There have been nine leads changes the top non-chaser Dale Earnhardt Jr. desperate for a win he held the lead for a bit yeah Montoya had a great run going Earnhardt Jr. had a super fast race car came up bumped that left rear took over and Earnhardt checked out for a moment yeah the story of his season has been engine failures and he's going through it again great driving though by Clint Boyer came in third in points maybe the most consistent driver in the chase looked like Reed Swords couldn't get up the gear I don't know if he missed the gear or not but boy Clint Boyer dove under him a miraculous miss great job by old Clint and how about Johnson and Gordon? They've won seven of the last nine here in Doc, and there they are again. Indeed, they have, Susie. This team's been almost unbeatable. Several of the last nine times they've come here, it's been one of these two guys winning. And by the way, Jeff Gordon has now gone by Biffle, and you see these guys, he is beginning to reel in 48 Jimmy Johnson with the fresher tire. I'm telling you, what's the most impressive about Jeff Gordon right now? Andy and I are just watching his lap speeds up here in the booth. And he run within a half a tenth of a second of what he run early in the race. I mean, a lot of these guys were falling off a little bit because they're losing brakes and not as efficient. But Gordon doesn't seem to affect that car at all. He's running the same as he did early. Got to be a lot of concern about what's going to happen with the fuel strategy on the 48, Dave. Yeah, Doc, he last hit pit road on lap 217, took on a full load of fuel. Ever since then, crew chief Jack Knauss has been telling his driver, save fuel, save fuel, save fuel. There have been three cautions since then. If he can get his driver lap two, 375, that's if, and there have been a lot of caution laps, then 125 laps to the end is about their fuel window under green. But you might expect more caution laps after that, too. So those are some of the numbers he's playing with. Can he get to 375? Not sure. Probably have a caution before then they hope and they will need a pit well Andy that really is rolling the dice Chad Knauss has been awfully good about doing that over the years but wow he he stayed out on the subsequent three caution flags and now needs a yellow you can see him sweating it a little bit on top of that pit box he's, he's hoping to get a caution when he needs it looking at this right here it looks like he's gonna need one pretty soon that tanks running pretty low on fuel for the 48 see Jeff's got a little bit more fuel and so does Denny they can go just a little bit longer. They've got about 35 laps more fuel. We told you if it has joined our coverage, the 24 car had uh, to come back on the pit road on lap 171 because of a loose wheel. Came back out in 33rd position. And now he has driven all the way back to the front. And you see the interval now is shrinking as he is in second spot, just about seven tenths of a second behind Jimmy Johnson. about how the 48 and 24 are getting closer and closer where you couldn't get much closer than they were in the race here in April back in the spring. White flag, but no surrender. Here we go. 
and thousands of a second, folks. It's 102 inches, and the, the top three in the spring were Johnson, Gordon, and Hamlin. The top three right now are Johnson, Gordon, and Hamlin. Mike Massaro. Yeah, big surprise, right, Doc, that the 24 and 48 are one and two right on the grid. Well, you know, it seems like the storyline we're going to be following all the way to Homestead is these two Hendrick cars. Well, I spoke with Jeff Gordon earlier this week about the open book policy at Hendrick and whether or not there are still some secrets. He said, absolutely not. Believe it or not, every change they make on any Hendrick race car, any air pressure change, any wedge adjustment, it goes into a database that's open to any engineer with the company. In fact, Jeff Gordon says that that's all good, but it's very rare that any of his teammates can run the same setup that he has. He said the only time he can think of throughout the course of 2007 that any of his teammates have run a similar setup to him, right here at Martinsville back in April, you guessed it, it was the 48 to 24 with almost identical setup. Well, Doc, one thing I like to know, how do you tap into that information, Andy? I mean, there are a lot of smart computer guys right here nowadays. <laughs> secret code. Yeah, during the race, they get a secret code. Let me find out what they're doing. Uh, 66, Jeff Green slow on the racetrack after running so well in the top five early. No caution flag. Right front is flat. Looks like he might also have the right rear down. Yeah, he probably melted that bead like we saw Tim Brewer show us a while ago. Hold your line, Russia. Hold your line. Looks like that same kind of a failure in that tire. He can make it around the pit road. He's not going to make it. Caution's out. Now the caution will come out. Oh, boy, what a break for Jimmy Johnson. This caution coming out about uh, 15 or 5, 14 laps before he had to come on pit road to get that fuel. Well, it just worked out. I mean, you got to say, Chad Canal's made a good decision now since he's got this caution. And the key thing here is, is that this 158 laps to go to the end of the race. You might even see some of these guys stretch that fuel, especially with these late cautions, where they might not pit again. This might be their last stop. Ooh, that's a lot to ask out of the tires, though, isn't it? Well, track position, we see how important it's been. Yeah, one melted bead with 10 laps to go in this race could totally change the complexion of the chase. Here they come. Caution number 12 on the day as they head down the pit road. Uh, Denny Hamlin will be the first in the pits. Jamie Little. And he started 30th, now coming in running third. He's just going to make an air pressure adjustment in four tires. And no surprise, he's running third behind Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Ford, just like last time here in the spring. Let's go to Dave. Here's the break the 48 needed. They will get it full of fuel. They will take on four tires. They will increase the air pressure in the right rear tire. That will help Jimmy's car turn a little bit better through the center of the corner. Mike? Steve Latar giving an emphatic command to his team to make sure you get every drop of fuel in that race car. It's very valuable. They'll drop the track bar a half around and make a four-tire change on the 24 car as he sits on pit road looking to win the race off. They're still having some trouble on the left rear. They're a little bit slow, but down off the jack now. See a big problem brewing right there. The catch can man didn't have that can engaged on that 24 car, and he probably didn't get that car full of fuel. And the 11 had a problem, too. Denny Hamlin had an issue on pit road. You see Truex gains 12 spots, Montoya back a spot. There's the issues on the 11 car on the uh, left front. Trying to get the tire down, and he's trying to get out. Can't get out because of Gil Little in there right in front of him. They have to back it up, and he gets able to get down and away. Reason for the caution flag is the 66 car of Jeff Green. Watch it, just would not stop, goes up and pops the wall, right side damage. Back after these messages and a word from our ABC station. Back at Martinsville Speedway, the Hendrick trifecta at the front of the field. Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, and then comes Bobby the Body and Kevin Harvick as we go back to green flag racing. But folks, a moment ago, there could be some, have been some serious issues in the pit stop of the 24 car that could impact his ability to run up front for the rest of the day. He's trying to hang there. There's Jeff Gordon back in third position. Let's show you what happened in the pit stop. Yeah, you see these guys making this pit stop, and the catch can man is trying to make a chassis adjustment while he's doing this. He's multitasking. You see him trying to reach over there and make that adjustment. Well, the catch can fell out of the car, and that's illegal for the gas man to gas the car with that thing out of there. But the gas man was heads up. He pointed at the catch can and says, plug it in. The, the, there's still trouble in paradise because this car can't be full of fuel. And see Steve Latart trying to talk to the NASCAR official explaining we weren't, did not have the fuel can in, so we weren't fueling the car because the catch can was not engaged. And Mike? And Doc catching up with Steve Latar. Steve, what happened? Well, we were making a chance to adjust the catch can pin. Uh, the adjustment, you know, the catch can fell out of the car, but the fuel man made a really wise decision. He unplugged. It would be a penalty if he kept fueling, so we're, we're not full on fuel, but at least we avoided the penalty. Hopefully we'll get a yellow. We were going to ask you, you just answered the question. You're not full on fuel, but how close are you? No, I, I don't think anybody can make it. If anybody makes it from here, they're more courageous than me. Well, guys, you heard the command over the radio just before the pit stop. He was urging the team to get every drop in. This is going to hurt them. 
a moment ago, it was his teammate Jimmy Johnson who needed to get a caution flag, and now Jeff Gordon is not going to be able to make it anywhere near the finish. He's going to have to have a caution to make it for sure, and he's and Steve Latart's betting that all these other guys will also have to have a caution because they're outside of their fuel window. But here's the thing. If they have enough caution flag laps, some of these guys will stay out there and try to, and try to go to the end without making another pit stop. So it's still going to be costly because he's not full of fuel. Tell you what's amazing. Take a look at all these Hendrick cars. <laughs> They've run 353 laps and they're still hooked bumper to bumper. They can't get away from each other. Jimmy Johnson trying to make a move inside of his teammate Kyle Busch as Kyle Busch takes the high line. Alan? Let's talk about Kyle Busch, the only one that did not stop under that caution among these lead car stock as he gives up the lead to Jimmy Johnson. I just talked to his crew chief, Alan Gustafson. Can you make it to the finish on fuel? He said, no, we cannot. We have to stop another time. He's betting that everyone else, just like Steve Letard, is going to have to stop for fuel again. But Andy, I'm kind of agreeing with you. I think we're going to see some guys start counting caution laps here and not visit pit road anymore the rest of this race. It's going to be interesting for sure, Alan, to see how how far these guys can go and then who may be able to make it without making another stop. These guys are worried about being able to win the chase. There are some other guys in this racetrack today who are worried about just trying to stay in the top 35 in the owner's points. The 22 car, for example, is off the race course in the garage area. That's Dave Blaney, and he came into the day in, in the 33rd position. Uh, Blaney actually was in 34th position. And here's the 21 car of Bill Elliott. This is the Wood Brothers JTG car. He is still driving on the racetrack on the lead lap. Elliott doing a great job and now put this car all the way back into the top 20. He's been driving that car hard. You talk about driving hard. Look here, Jeff Gordon now is going by the five car. He's just going to drive as hard as he can. Hope, hope the brakes go his way. If they do, he can still maybe have a shot at this. Yeah, he's uh, that's all he needs to do right now is just drive his brains out with limited fuel. We talked earlier about he doesn't have a brake problem, so he can still drive the car hard. And that's not going to hurt him at all. And possible overheating on the 07 car. Spotters said they saw some steam coming out of one of the overflow valves there where one of the vents a moment ago. We'll take a look. These bull rings are really hard to keep the cars cool. It's just not enough air really flowing through the front of the grill to cool the engine. You have to run fans and all that stuff just to try to keep them cool. You see, right now he's in 18th position. Clint Boyer went in this race about 78 points out of the lead, and now he's down to 149 out. Johnson was 68 behind Jeff Gordon. Now he's only 58 behind, so he's picked up a little ground, and Boyer's lost. Left side of your screen. I don't know what kind of engine issues the aid car was having earlier, but right now this thing is running pretty darn well, Andy. Yeah, I don't see any issues at all. I mean, he's running just as good as he was earlier. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can be down on power on a short track and still do pretty good. Well, I'm watching his lap times right now. They're very respectful. Last time by at 2084 compared to 2075 the leader. So no engine problems right now. And he's up in the sixth position. So it looks like it's back in the game here for him. Trying to move by Bobby Labonte in the 43 car. Some consideration about swapping Bobby and Kyle for ownership situation with points. More about that later on. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia. Along with Andy Petrie, Rusty Wallace, I'm Jerry Punts. And our group covering ESPN on ABC here. NASCAR Nextel Cup. Stop number six in the chase for the next L Cup championship. Take a look at our Ford lap leaders today. Jeff Gordon has led once for 108 laps. Kyle Busch has led three times for a total of 106. Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Burton, Dale Earnhardt Jr. led 24. Juan Pablo Montoya and Jeff Green has led a lap. It's pretty easy to see that the Hendrick gang has dominated the top three positions for laps led. Jeff Gordon trying to uh, drive for five, trying to win his fifth ever NASCAR Nextel Cup championship, but it's been a little bit different this year. He's got a, a brand new wife and a brand new addition to the family. We asked him about the new perspective on racing. Free lane the last couple of weeks, he had Ingrid and uh, Ella Sophia, his little daughter, with him. He said, yeah, that's never happened before. I never been able to have care hold my little daughter in victory lane uh, and uh, the, the proud papa trying to get it done. And he'd like to hold her on that stage at the Waldorf at the end of the year as a NASCAR champion. We told you about the race for 35th in owner's points, and the 22 car had been off the track 66 laps with a broken rear gear. 
They've changed it. Now Dave Blaney back on the racetrack being shown in 37th position, 67 laps back. Whereas the 21 car we showed you a little bit ago, that is uh, Bill Elliott. He is the last car on the lead lap. And now he has been lapped by the 48 car that has gone by. He's being shown one lap down in 29th position. I'm talking about Jeff Gordon says he had a whole new perspective about being a father. He probably had a whole new perspective when he had to change his first diaper, too. <laughs> Talk about perspective. <laughs> That'll wake you up on it. <laughs> How many diapers did you change? Patty did most of them, that's for sure. Sounds I had, like she did all of them. Uh, she probably did. I had my <laughs> fair share, too, though. Okay. Moving right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin Arvick is trying to move ahead in third position. Best run he's had here at Martinsville Speedway. He got his best starting spot this for this race. He's never started above fifth. He qualified third, now being shown in third position. And their lap times are just hanging right in there. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Harvick even. Harvick now is just matching their lap times in that 29 car. It's at that point of the race that these guys are probably trying to conserve just a little bit so they'll have something for that last push at the end. Dave? And if they do happen to come down pit lane one more time, uh, they're short like everybody else on fuel. Uh, they'll try to make that car turn a little bit better in the center. That was a complaint last time. That's kind of what they've been fighting all day. Typical here at Martinsville, but they made an air pressure adjustment on the last stop to try to help Kevin with that, and he's been silent ever since. It's always a good sign when your driver's silent. That means he's happy and he's driving hard. Uh, I always like that when the guy's not saying a whole lot. Hey, one guy that lit a fire under here, that's a 31 car of Jeff Burton after uh, the penalty of being on pit road for the commitment cone violation. He was running fourth at the time and had led a bunch of laps, had to go to the back of the pack, and has now steadily driven his way back toward the front. Burton now trying to go by Montoya. That is for eighth position. These guys have been battling for the last, I'm going to say, 10 or 12 laps. So uh, it's just a pretty good race going on with those two guys. Now the traffic right in front of Jimmy Johnson has allowed the 24 car to pull right up on the rear buffer, sort of reminiscent of what we saw here back in the spring. Just about the time Jeff Gordon jumps out to make a pass, a 38 car, David Gilliland's there. Can't get that done. Tucks right back into 48, right behind Johnson again. And I really like how these fellows are managing their cars. They're not getting aggressive. They're not tearing them up. And I know I've harped all day long about these brakes, but that's the biggest problem they've got. And these two right now are doing some of the best jobs to take care of them. Now the two car of Kurt Busch is the last car on the lead lap, and uh, he's uh, going to try to stay there, although Johnson's got to move on the inside. And Kurt's car is not handling real well right now because the right side splitter is completely missing from the instant he had earlier. And that just not, he can't be creating too much downforce, Andy, with that problem. And believe it or not, since it's a short racetrack, downforce still is important. If you don't have downforce, the car's not going to stick and handle good. And everybody wants all that they can get. For the next Dell Cup, here we're at the halfway point. There'll be just four races left after today. These two guys have been uh, the guys to beat throughout the first five events and continuing today. 108 laps left here at Martinsville Speedway. Jeff Gordon has left has led once for 108 laps, and right now he would get the 10 bonus points. Kyle Busch has led three times for 106. Jimmy Johnson has led three times for 94 laps. How about listening in to the top three radios? First Jimmy Johnson, then Jeff Gordon, then Kevin Harvick. The run were for right, and it feels like it did when we were in this stage uh, earlier in the race, so it's, it backed itself up. It's like tight, 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 and it just snaps and turns and all at once, which is pretty much what it does on the longer runs, too. Trouble in turn two, the 40 car Stremmy spins around the double zero. Rudiman does a heck of a job right behind him not to pile into him. And Stremmy does a nice job spinning it around and uh, he lost a couple of braces on that front splitter, but otherwise none the worse for wear. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen here. This is uh, probably gonna be the money stop for all these guys. Everybody can make it from here. This is a real break for Jeff Gordon in the 24 team. But you got to get on and off pit road. You cannot afford a mistake. Can't have a lug nut loose. Still got to be able to get some fuel in the car. It's going to be interesting to see if some of these other guys are 
who, who may want to roll the dice and stay out. And the pits are open. See the green flag. There comes a 48-24. Who's going to stay out? Here comes uh, Harvick, Earnhardt, Kyle Busch, Tony Stewart. Looks like all the leaders are coming in. 48 with that 24 glued to his rear bumper coming down pit road. Here comes Harvick and Earnhardt Jr., Kyle Busch, and a 31 of Jeff Burton. Jamie. Jeff Burton pulls into his pit box four tires. He said he needs some rear grip. Guys, if he stays in that top 10 position, he will have gained two positions in the point. Alan? Critical pit stop here. Kyle Busch's team had some troubles on one earlier. A four tire change and a wedge adjustment and hopefully gain some track position, Dave. Pit stop for the leader may take just a moment longer. Half the spring rubber out of the right rear. Four tire change. Fuel in the car. Mike? Jeff Gordon a little bit loose off, but otherwise pretty happy. A four tire change and fuel for the 24 car. He's away. Great pit stop by Steve Letard and company. Jeff Gordon gains a spot. Newman up five position. Jimmy Thank Johnson you, lost two. At Kenseth up seven spots. You see Harvick back three. And if you're wondering why we're under caution, we'll show you what happened to David Strimmey's dodge off of turn two. Spins around, lots of smoke, and the double zero somehow is able to avoid him and not get into contact. Back with the restart at Martinsville in just a moment. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway. That's the view from Brent Bodine driving the uh, Chevrolet pace car. Looking back at Jeff Gordon, our leader. Ryan Newman right behind him gained some positions on pit road because they only changed two tires. Jimmy Johnson is third. Matt Kenseth likewise only changed two tires. He's back in fourth position. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in fifth. From high above, our good friends at Goodyear and the Goodyear blimp. The official tire of NASCAR, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for over 50 years. Get you a good shot of this half-mile paper clip-shaped oval celebrating its 60th anniversary here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, historic Martinsville Speedway. Folks, next week... NASCAR coverage continues. Memphis Motorsports Park, 3 Eastern Time on ESPN2. Carl Edwards trying to wrap up that Bush title. And then on Sunday, the chase for the next Dell Cup Series continues down to the wire. Four races left. We go to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Remember, in March, all the top finishers were in the chase. Jimmy Johnson won in the spring. Tony Stewart took the Atlanta checkers last fall. The NASCAR next Dell Cup Series action, 1 o'clock Eastern Time next Sunday on ABC. Carl Edwards is going to try to wrap up that Bush title up in Memphis. You're going to go up, you're going to do qualifying with us, Rusty, and go up to Memphis along with Marty Reed and the crew and call that Bush race up there. It's going to be a lot of fun, Jerry. We should be finished up about 9 o'clock on Friday night, call the NASCAR next up cup qualifying and head to Memphis and do the race the next day and back. It's going to be a lot of uh, flying on the airplane, that's for sure. All right, getting set for the restart, Andy. you got to wonder, when do you turn these guys loose and not worry at all about what's going to happen with the brakes? Well, if I'm Jeff Gordon's crew chief, I just tell him to try to get a little bit of the lead here and then try to save the brakes. Save something for these late race restarts where you really have to lean on. Green flag, folks. Less than 100 laps to go. Can Gordon hang on? How hungry is that 12 car? How's Ryan Newman? Hasn't won in two years. He's got to be really hungry, especially after last week. Almost won the race and had couple laps to go had that left rear tire problem Penske team thought they had it wrapped up but Andy this is a good decision putting two tires to get this position absolutely great decision because it gets him that track position we've seen you know all race long how important that is to get this car up front with these guys because you get back in that you look at that group right there you get back in that you can't go anywhere huh? here are three chasers together right in that pack the 07 Clint Boyer third in the chase the one Truex and the 99 of Edwards and 99 of Edwards been holding on the whole race with those battery problems probably lost not later running on battery power right now he's barely holding on because of all those problems Watch the restart here from Carl Edwards on board camera. Boom. Wow, that was pretty close to spinning out the 07. And you talked about can't stop the car good because of uh, not having any cooling to the brakes. You've got to believe that he's, that's what caused that problem. Alan? Let's talk about that 07 of Clint Boyer. About, think about a pendulum swinging back and forth, and think of the extremes in handling of a race car on each end of that pendulum. That's what that 07 has been. They make an adjustment. The car goes from tight to loose, an adjustment that goes from loose to tight. They haven't been able to hit the adjustment to get the car just right. And 
Mark Boyer's been in that mess of traffic all day. Jamie? Well, I don't know what he's done, but he's done a heck of a job. Carl Edwards has conserved that battery power. They haven't complained about it. Nothing's been wrong. The brakes have been good. That last pit stop, he came in and changed four tires. He said the center was too tight, but that was his only issue. Then his spotter came over the radio and said, you know what's going to happen next, don't you? Crashes. Then his uh, crew chief, Bob Osborne, said, just be patient out there. You know this last 100 laps are going to be demolition derby. Dave? Jamie, a pit stop ago, the one team decided to put on just two right side tires for track position. Didn't work. Car got tight. He's great. Restarting back in the 17th position now, where he had been up in the top 10. Four tires this time. Hopefully adjustments that will help him drive that race car. These guys trying to hang in there and be able to make it the final 92 laps. Look at this gaggle of cars. The 11 of Denny Hamlin. Near yeah. incident a moment ago, the five of Bush. Look at side by side is Harvick and Tony Stewart. Harvick looks like the big loser in this deal. You see, he's trying to work by the 66 of Jeff Green. Just ahead right there, and he gets in the left rear of Kevin Harvick. All these guys drive right under him. Loose a lot of spots. Now from Kevin Harvick's onboard camera. Kevin Surprise. Oh, Kevin's up in the middle of the racetrack. Looks like he gave him three wide. plenty of room. Clear all around. Lost about three or four positions because of that, and that's not what Kevin needed to happen. He's he's one of the chase contenders, chasing points. Doesn't need to lose any more at all. Here's the frustration point, too. That 66 car is three laps down. These guys are on the lead lap, so you can see why these guys might be a little frustrated with Jeff Green right now. Well, here's another one of the problems. The 66 car, Jeff Green, here's one of the fellas probably going to be looking for a ride next year. You know what? They don't care about the chase contenders. Here is Scrimmy again. He produced the caution flag with a spin at lap 395, and he spins again here on lap 412. 14th caution flag of the afternoon. See this fire coming out the exhaust pipe. If they can get this thing started, it won't be a big deal. There's some residual fuel down in that exhaust pipe from spinning around here. Got to spin the engine over, try to get it fired up to blow all that dead fuel out of there so it doesn't catch fire again like that. 99 of Edwards trying to go by. They're rubbing paint as Edwards slips by. Here comes Truex. Oh, there's a perfect... That's what happens when the curb comes up and two guys are trying to go at the same spot. David Strummy got the worst of that deal. It wasn't David's fault. It was hard racing. Now watch Harvick. He wasn't real happy with the 66 there a couple of laps ago. Under caution. So that's a love tap. That's a tiny tap. That's I mean, just to say, hey, man. He could have hit him I'm a lot harder. Lap. I'm here, buddy. You're the one that hit me. Remember, I'm back here. Be careful. There's the contact. One in the 40. He tried to get you to one. Damage on the back of the 40 car, David Streamy. That's the reason for caution number 14. Back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Back at Martinsville Speedway under caution for the 14th time today. Just 84 laps to go as we uh, visit with our in-race reporter, Carl Edwards. Hey, Carl Edwards, Rusty Wallace, you got me? I'm clear, Rusty. Carl, how's the brakes holding out in that car? We've heard you had some alternator problems and had to turn the fans off. You doing okay out there? Yeah, man, I'm about half loopy from breathing the fumes for uh, a couple hundred laps here, but uh, the brakes are doing great. The guys did a good job with the car, so just a little tight and thinner as it's getting cooler. So we'll see what we can get here on this last run. Uh, a lot of craziness out here today. Yeah, we saw in that last restart, everybody kind of got stacked up, and you got in the back of that 07 car. What happened there? I don't know. Um, it's kind of one of the deals where everybody stopped, and I was like, well, that's a good buddy of mine. I'll just go ahead and hit him because I couldn't stop. So, uh, you know, the one did a good job of stopping, and everybody did a good job of not wrecking each other. But uh, it's, uh, it's pretty wild, man. All right, buddy. Well, I told everybody he had brake problems. That's what caused that problem. But thanks for clarifying everything. <laughs> All right, you have a good race, man. All right, 10 for us. Thanks for uh, sticking up for me. I appreciate it. You make up any excuse you want, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to be pretty accurate up here, but things are changing a lot. A lot of alternator problems, brake problems, wheel hop, and everything is going on as our Bob Osborne up there probably knows. Yeah, I'm trying to... We're, we're pretty low on the bolts there, but, uh, yeah, a lot of problems, but we'll see if we can get through the end without having any more. I will stay tough and keep that air conditioner turned off. 
Bob Osborne, Carl Edwards. I love talking to Carl. He's just so doggone honest. I love the fact that he's on the... <laughs> he's telling yeah, we, exactly what happened. We try to make happened. excuses for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, 82 laps to go. Or this is going to be a typical Martinsville shootout. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Back in Martinsville Speedway, green next time by as we check in the pits quickly with Mike Massaro. And a rough day for David Strumming. What happened? We, uh, we had a pretty rough day today, but uh, things were pretty good. And we got lapped down, and the car was uh, just too loose in the long run. But uh, Carl there, he wasn't cutting me no slack. I was trying to race the lap down car so I could get back up there. And we got going together, but uh, it's just one of those days. It's, it's tough on everybody because it's so hard to pass here, but... Uh, We'll bounce back next week. We go to Atlanta. Well, Doc, it's been described as hand-to-hand -hand combat, and we've seen a lot of that this afternoon. No doubt about it. It has certainly uh, been a rough one, and it's probably going to get even rougher here these final 78 laps. Jeff Gordon, the leader. Remember the 12 car, Newman, on two tires? He has not won. Ryan Newman we're talking about in 76 races. He wants it in a bad way. And you know what? I don't think Ryan Newman cares too much about who's in the chase. This intensity level keeps coming higher and higher the later we get in this race. And he doesn't care. He wants to win one for his team. He doesn't care about these other guys in this chase. He wants to win. 44 car slowing a little bit. Dale Jarrett making his final start. At Martinsville Speedway slowing down a little bit in the Toyota. You know, one fellow we thought had problems, and he thought he had problems himself, was Dale Earnhardt Jr., but Andy looks like he's back at the speed right now, and his lap times are right there. This guy's got a shot to win this thing if they have some more caution flags. The strategy kicks in again. They can run some green flag laps. He's had a really good car in these long runs, so if they can clear all this lap traffic and have green to the end, he might have a shot. Matt Kenseth has not had a top 10 finish since he finished second here back in 2002, so it's been a while for Kenseth. He took two tires, now being shown back in the fifth position there in the 17 car. Another fellow took two tires is Ryan Newman, and Jeff Gordon just can't seem to get away from him too much right now. Those two tires are holding in there pretty good for Newman at the moment. He's making Jeff Gordon run hard right here. These are pretty fast lap times they're running. Poor old Ryan Newman, uh, Dave. His crew chief, Mike Nelson, has used the term fun a couple of times during the chase. They're not in it, but since they're not, the pressure is off, and Mike says we can think outside the box a little bit. A two-tire stop late in the race, yeah, that was a little bit outside the box. We can possibly help our teammate who's in the chase, but mostly it'll be about fun. Now, today, he also said fun. A lot to change on the race car, things to turn, things to do for the crew chief. It's a fun race. They've been working on that track bar and wedge all day, and Mike Nelson's been thinking all the way through it, so having a good time running second late in the race. Hey, Mike Nelson's done a great job with his 12 car. He's been real calm. He's constantly working on this car. And him and Ryan get along real well, and you can tell it's showing on the racetrack. A lot of traffic these chasers are mired in. Kevin Harvick is one of them back in ninth position. As he's being shown in ninth, Tony Stewart is in eighth. That is the double zero, by the way, the uh, lap car of Rudiman, who's in 27th position. You see the 29th, 20 up there. The five car in front of him. That seventh is Kyle Busch. Eighth, Tony Stewart. Ninth, Harvick. Harvick's car is going away a little bit. He had a pretty strong car earlier. He stopped, he's fell back quite a bit. He's passed by Greg Biffle. Yeah, Biffle will take the ninth spot away. Harvick back to tenth. Then comes Jeff Burton back in 11th spot in the 31 car. There comes Burton into your picture. And look at that, folks. They're stacked up big time at the start finish line right now. I see Johnny Sauter in that mix. Paul Menard. Carl Edwards says he's got a great car. He's working the top side of that track. 0 7. Glenn Boyer back in that stack right in front of the 99. That's 14th and 15th. We're talking about Boyer, Edwards, and Bobby Labonte back behind them in the 43 car of Bobby Labonte. How much would it mean, what would it mean for someone like Clint Boyer to win this championship? We asked him about winning the title here in 2007. It wasn't but five weeks ago. We were just excited to be in the chase, and we were just going to learn from it, and, and, you know, hopefully we'd make it in the top ten so we could go to the banquet, you know? And, and now it's like we've done one our first race. We're sitting third in points, and, and, you know, all five races have been really good. So, you know, sky's the limit. We want to win a championship. And they are in the hunt. They are certainly the Cinderella story of this chase. But now we got some uh, drama building for second position. Newman trying to hang on with only two tires over the 48 car of Jimmy Johnson. Well, I still believe this is the right, new, uh, right move for Newman to try to hold on to these two tires. But 
Boy, Jimmy Johnson's eating his rear bumper up right now. The last couple laps went underneath of him. Just a matter of time before Jimmy Johnson gets by this 12 car. And then we're going to have us a little rematch from the spring. <laughs> Jimmy's got a tiptoe. Be careful not to bounce off that quarter panel and tear one of those valve stems off. And that could really be a big downer for Jimmy Johnson trying to get a clean pass, not bounce off that curb either. What well, could be a big downer for Ryan Newman if that splitter gets in his left rear tire like we saw earlier. He doesn't want that to happen. But Jimmy needs to run. He's running out of time now. He needs to get past him. Get up to Gordon. Try to get him around him. I see another car lurking behind these guys, that red number eight, and his lap times look just as good as these leaders. And if they can go green, like I said before, I believe he's got a car that might be able to contend with these guys. More on Jimmy Johnson with Dave. And during that last caution period, Jimmy Johnson and his crew chief, Chad Canal, sized up the end of this race, possibly racing with their teammate, Jeff Gordon. Back up that little bit. You're running about a half a tenth, excuse me, half a tenth faster than the 24. You get him, bud. You get him. That's four, it's gonna be a good dog fight. We got pretty equal stuff. Ten four. We got a better driver though. And it's a challenge for these crew chiefs too. We talked about it in the uh, in the countdown. Steve Letarte versus Chad Canals. Chad told me this morning, you know what? Jeff Gordon's been so good here. I feel like I do have to make a better race car for Jimmy than maybe Jeff has. Jeff is the acknowledged leader here as far as drivers. I think my driver's good. I better have a good race car too. Jimmy, very good at Martinsville, very good here in the fall race in third. His average finish is third. And by the way, for you Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson fans, a moment ago, Earnhardt Jr. turned a lap two-tenths of a second quicker than either one of those guys. ESPN's coverage of NASCAR Nexto Cup Series on ABC, the Subway 500. Brought to you by Subway. Subs that are full-flavored and delicious. Subway restaurants satisfy the craving. Subway, eat fresh. And Toyota, moving forward. Under caution for the 15th time today here at Martinsville Speedway. 15 cautions for 97 laps. Folks, just 57 laps to go. And uh, the reason for the caution, a little pushing and shoving, a little rubbing is racing. Watch the one and the 25. Now watch the rear tires in the 25 here, Charlie. He's going to get down in the corner deep and start wheel hopping. Watch this right here. Bop, 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 bop. See it jumping up and down, guys? And that's what causes him to get loose. Slides up into the one car and takes him out. Problem is, Martin probably doesn't know that happened. Probably thinks he just took him out on purpose. Well, I see Martin Truex is actually doing a little bit of that on his own, too. He kind of came down on the 25. Looks like these guys were arguing over space. Sometimes it's better just to let cooler heads prevail in that, that kind of a situation. Yeah, a lot, you're exactly right, Andy. And a lot of times deep in the race, though, like we've been talking about the brakes. They don't stop real good. And the heart of these fellas push on the brake, it locks up the rears and causes that problem. Well, a lot of concern last week, uh, last time out at Charlotte about what would happen the final laps about not wrecking each other from the owner. Let's hear from the owner right now. Alan Bestwick stand about with Rick Hendrick. I don't think anybody's put more miles on their feet today than Rick Hendrick. He's gone back and forth between Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Kyle Busch's pit box. How difficult is this to watch your two cars race for the win, your three cars race for the win, and two of them race for the championship? Yeah, I think I've got about 500 miles on my feet today. It, you know, it's a... Uh, but it is nerve-wracking to see the guys race each other, and they're going to have to race each other pretty hard, but uh, that's what Martinsville's all about. Now, you're over here on Kyle Busch's pit box now. Is this neutral territory in the race for the win, or what, what makes you decide to move from one place to the other? When uh, Kyle gets the third, I'm going to leave here. I'll be in another, but probably the 25. All right, thanks, Rick. Good luck to your team. He's got a busy job watching all these cars. You can't pull for any one of them over the other, huh, Doc? Well, it's hard to pull for him. It really is. You can't pull for the 24 over to 48 like Rick Hendrick is, but uh, trying not to do, I mean. One thing you can do is pull for the, both of these guys to beat that A car. I think that A car is going to be tough to beat these last 50 laps. And I was here a few years ago when all three of his cars wrecked each other on the back stretch in the late laps, and he that's a night he never wants to relive again, of course. Uh, Jeff Gordon trying to hang on. A moment ago, he said on the radio, guys, we may be in trouble. We're not really that good on short runs. We're going to find out here. 55 laps to go. There's the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, and the 8 car, Dale Jr. are out running Jeff Gordon, so that's Jeff's big concern right now. Jeff's got the spot, and that's going to help him a ton. Now, I don't think he has the best car right now. 
Jimmy Johnson has won the last two in a row here. Jeff Gordon, a seven-time winner at Martinsville Speedway, winning his active driver here. 12 car, Ryan Newman back there looking underneath the 48 car, and right behind him is the eight car still stuck in some traffic. Real important for these guys to get clear of these lap cars. It's hard to make good lap times, as you can see Dale Earnhardt Jr. struggling around this 38. Just have to work the top side of the racetrack. Just moving around to 55 and Michael Walton, now to 38 of David Gilliland. And on that outside lane, it's just hard to get enough traction. He's taking the, the long way around the track, and, man, that's not what he wants right now. He's got to get up there behind that 12 car. Gordon pulling away by about a half a second, right in the tracks is the 48 and the 12. Here comes the 8, and now the 17. Remember, Kins is one of the guys who only changed two tires. We heard Matt Kins would say earlier in the week that he wasn't very good at this racetrack, but he's proven to be pretty good. He's kept his car in contention all day long here. Back up front, Jeff Gordon, the 24 car. I'll stand it down to his pits and Mike Massaro. Well, Doc, not too long ago, you heard Dave Burns report on the 48 team saying that Chad Canals felt like he had to give Jimmy Johnson a better race car. Well, Steve Latar told me the exact opposite this morning. He told me all he needs to do is get the car close, and his driver will do the rest. It may come down to driver ability for Jeff Gordon. You heard him radio in not too long ago saying he's terrible on short runs, but they've told him what line the 48 is driving. This may come down to man versus man. Jeff Gordon trying to hold off Jimmy Johnson by just guarding his line around this racetrack. Inside of 50 laps to go, it's going to be a typical Martinsville short track shootout. Back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to the Subway 500. We are under caution for the 16th time today. Caution coming out with the 88 car. Ricky Rudd making his final start in the native, native state of Virginia. There's the flat tire on the front car of Rudd. Now watch the contact. A little beating and banging between the nine car of Kane and the 88 of Rudd. And just run out of real estate. Get down into the turn one right there. Looks like 88 got stuck in the outside. Whoa, a little payback there. And I don't think anybody want to pay back Ricky Rudd. That's one guy I wouldn't mess with. Yeah, that's right. Now, speaking of a little contact and the guys that's going after it, watch the 24 and the 48 car here. Turn one. Jimmy just about gets there. Gets that position on this 24 car. Jeff has him cleared right here, but he can't out, can't out break the 48 getting into three. Well, he sailed it down in that corner, moved him up a little bit on the racetrack, picked the throttle back up, and drove off. And now we've got a new leader, Jimmy Johnson. Jeff Gordon gave him plenty of room. Now watch Rick Hendrick. You think there's not a, a moment here for a couple of different antacids? He says, oh my gosh, guys, give me a blindfold. I don't want to see this. <laughs> Rick. But Jeff Gordon gave Jimmy Johnson plenty of room, didn't pinch him off, and Jimmy made the pass cleanly. Back with a restart here at Martinsville in just a moment. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. Crew Chiefs, uh, Chad Canals in the left top, Steve Latart in the right top. In the bottom, there are two race cars, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon getting ready for the restart. By the way, you Tony Stewart fans, Tony came in a moment ago, four tires, gave up the ninth position, and comes all the way out in 22nd spot. Green flag, 38 laps to go here in Virginia. Well, Jimmy Johnson got a good jump on that restart right there and getting that clean air, he's out of there now. The 24, Jeff Gordon getting held up by Michael Waltrip, a lap car. Waltrip racing for the lucky dog spot. He's not cutting Jeff any slack right here. Jeff needs that bottom of the right here. He'll get clear now and get it. He's got to have that bottom lane. Jeff Gordon, car number 24, trying to reel in his teammate Jimmy Johnson. Mike? Well, Doc, this is the type of situation that... Well, we'll get back to that in just a minute. Trouble on the track. Well, a couple of chasers involved. There's a good look right back at the hood of the 99 car, Carl Edwards. They both had just pitted back in all that traffic. Tony Stewart gets it refired. Those two were all jammed up. The 99 car couldn't get going. He got locked behind the 20 there. The 20's engine wouldn't refire. Lost a lot of time right there, but it's not going to hurt him. They'll be able to 
catch back up to the back of the pack, but this is late in the race to have problems like this. Caution number 17. It was Martin Truex Jr. Gets into the 45 car. This is quite a few instances we've seen this one car in today. He just keeps running out of room. That curb keeps sneaking up on him. He hits the curb and gets up on these guys, spins them out. Here are the victims. Tony Stewart trying to get stopped so he doesn't just T-bone the side. And right behind him was a 99 of Carl Edwards. Look. Correct bottom, just slow down. Stop, stop, just sit there. You got him behind you, you're Under good. caution number 17 today. 34 laps to go. Back with a restart. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Back in Martinsville, Virginia. Subway 500, final laps. It'll be 31 to go. It'll be 30 when you take the green flag. Who says history doesn't repeat itself? Remember what happened here back in April between the 48 and 24, the pushing and shoving and bumping? 65 one thousandths of a second's margin of victory for Jimmy Johnson. Will it be that close or even closer? We're going to find out. Green flag. Jimmy Johnson leads Jeff Gordon down. Ryan Newman hungry back there. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. also very quick in the eight car. I'm going to tell everybody, Michael Walter just got the lucky dog, the free pass. He's back in the lead lap right now. He did a good job holding those guys off to do that. Michael being shown back in 26th position on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to get past the lap traffic before he can attempt to make any kind of move on the 12 car. I'm afraid Dale Earnhardt Jr. needed some green flag laps to be able to beat these guys. We got laps running out. He's going to have to get going. Yeah, we've had so many caution plays, Andy, late in the race right here. He just keeps losing his rhythm. He gets that momentum going, gets that car working on the top side, shoots to the bottom of the racetrack, starts picking up some speed, and the caution comes out. Probably killing him right now. Really working in favor of Ryan Newman, though. Oh, yeah, that was a great move by his team to put him out in two tires to get that track position. It looks like, it looks like Gordon's uh, able to hang with his 48 right here. May have found some. Racetrack probably changing a little bit too because it's getting darker or getting lower. Uh, sun's getting lower in the sky. We've right. had some cautions here. Well, right now, the complete turn one and two is shaded right now, and turn three and four has got the sun on it. So uh, it's definitely going to be different. The handling of the car down to one and two versus three and four. So that's probably giving a little bit of a problem right there. See Jimmy working the top side of the track on Exeter turn two. He's trying to figure his own line out there. Mike? Well, guys, Jeff Gordon, as you know, comes into this race uh, with a lot of momentum. He's won the last two races and has a pretty healthy lead in the standing. 68 points over Jimmy Johnson. Johnson trying to cut that down. Still, Jeff Gordon, not quite content with his advantage, wants to win this race badly, but is starting to get a little bit discouraged. This was his radio conversation with his crew chief just a few laps ago. What we can do, man? We're just not very good right now. Oh, buddy, that's it. That's all we can do, man. Trouble on the track, Martin Truex Jr. around. Well, the one car has had his share of issues and troubles. He's been sort of a cue ball out there, being bounced up off the left that. front flat. Actually, the left front tire is missing from that one car, and Martin tries to bring it back around. One of our chasers, that's part of the tire that's down, the bottom part. Yeah, I think it hit the curb, missing. oh no, it came off the rim is what I believe. Jerry, it looks like the car's going to be fine, though, guys. He's coming just for a pit stop. The air dam's not tore up. The splitter's fine. Look, he got a little boot from behind him by the six car. Looks like Tony and Carl just barely get through this one, too. they got to be saying, what's wrong with you guys? We can't catch a break. There's the uh, John Andretti. Here's the six car of Reagan with the, with the bump under the one car of Martin Truex. Come on, 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 come on. How about from Carl Edwards' viewpoint? Stop, stop, stop. And that's a sick... Now he's moving. He's all with him. That's a sick feeling when you can't see anything out there and you're trying to get through that traffic. That is just a, a tough one. 23 laps to go, and we're having more problems like we've seen the last four weeks late in the stage of the race. Tonight, ABC is all new all night long, starting at 7 Eastern with America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by Extreme Makeover Home Edition at 9 Eastern. Spend an hour with the Desperate Housewives, and then Emmy winner Sally Field stars in Brothers and Sisters. It's a brand new Sunday tonight on ABC. And tonight, 
Martinsville Speedway. We've got just 20 to go, Brad. It's going to be wild. This is going to be great. We've got 200 cats sitting back there in fourth and fifth, and Earnhardt and uh, Kenseth also with Newman. It's going to be interesting these last 20 laps. Doc, just like the last five races in the chase, expect a crazy finish. We call it the chase zone. You heard of the red zone in football where everything gets critical and crucial. Every down is important. Now every lap is important. We're inside the chase zone here. 20 laps to go at Martinsville Green Flag Waste. Can Jimmy Johnson hang on and win three in a row? What about Jeff Gordon? He moves high right in front of Ryan Newman. As every single week, the last four at least, we've seen all this crash and late in the race. The intensity. And with 19 laps to go, they're out of time right now. they got to roll. i got a feeling I'm going to see more of this. Problems in the two-car, Kurt Busch, former winner here. He was the last car on the lead lap, and now he is slow on the racetrack. Another one of our chase contenders having problems. A lot of damage early in the race. Looks like Jeff Gordon's been adjusting a little bit here. He's got a, oh, he's got a look Whoa, here. Inside a 48 car, Gordon made some adjustments. Jimmy Johnson pulls him by half a car lane. And Jimmy's got to just keep this thing on the bottom of the track and put opening up the bottom lane. I was going to say, you know, Jeff's had to be going to school on this. He's been watching the, where the weaknesses are on this 48, and he's trying to exploit them. But Jimmy's just made a commitment to the top of this track, guys. He's not even thinking about going to the bottom. I guess this car's just too tight down there, and he's just committed to the top. Bill Elliott's smoking smoke. real bad here, guys. 21 car, plume of smoke. We And caution. Got all the likely. Caution being waved again. This is, will be, this will tie the record for cautions here at Martinsville. 19 cautions that was set back in October of 2005. These cautions are not good for Jimmy Johnson. It's pretty noticeable that he's struggling on these restarts, trying to get this car up to speed, because there's no way in the world he'd be opening up that bottom lane as let Jeff Gordon take it. Just can't seem to get the car to stay in the bottom right now. And Andy, a lot of times you've got to get these tires back up to temperature, get all the, the rubber build up off the tires so you can get going again. It looks like Jimmy's having that problem. It's either that or his car's just getting tighter as his sun goes down. It looks like he's just becoming more vulnerable to, uh, to the leaving that bottom open. And Jeff's going to take advantage of it. How pensive is it for the people we just saw a moment ago? Chad Canals, Rick Hendrick, you saw Ingrid, the, the, crew, the uh, wife, a moment ago of Jeff Gordon. Shandy, the wife of Jimmy Johnson. There's Ingrid. Caution comes up. What's the reaction from Chad Canals? Uh, man, he hates seeing that when you've got that lead. <laughs> oh, why, 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 caution flag? He knows that Jeff Gordon might need some laps to be able to make this pass. Yeah, everybody's just getting miserable right now with all these caution flags. Like, come on, make this stop. Let's get this race going. Let's race it out. More on the 48 with Dave. Yeah, and he was asked this week if racing his friend, Jeff Gordon, uh, you know, got his competitive juices going more because he was his buddy. He said, no, I, I get my competitive juices going here at Martinsville racing Jeff Gordon because he's Jeff Gordon. He's very good here. I have to bring my A game every time, and it's a lot of fun, but he knows that he's got the, one of the best guys at Martinsville right behind him, and he's got to be conscious of that as he tries to hold him off these last few laps. Mike? And you know, Dave, Jeff Gordon was asked the same question about being friends with Jimmy Johnson and how battling for a championship and for race wins affects that friendship. And Jeff was pretty forthcoming, saying, well, it definitely challenges our friendship. He remembers back to what happened here in April and said it took them a good two or three days to actually get over it. But he says in the long run, friendship wins out over competition on the racetrack. But when it comes to that competition, they both want to win. Yeah, Jeff Gordon, very frustrated, probably as frustrated as I can remember him after that race here back in April when he was trying to get by Jimmy Johnson and actually popping him in the back end trying to make the pass, thinking Jimmy was going to crowd him. But Jimmy's trying to win the race. Well, right now, if Jimmy doesn't guard the bottom of that racetrack right now, Jerry, when he go back to restart, he's going to have the same problem again because Jeff's working the bottom side of this racetrack awful good. And Andy, it's pretty obvious that... Uh, you know, Jimmy Johnson's struggling to keep that car down there right now. Well, they both learned something from that last race, and I know Jeff Gordon is thinking about what he's going to do. You've seen him adjust on these restarts. I think he's got something for this 48. You know, Susie and Brad can both see him coming off a of turn two. What do you guys think? Looking at these guys come off turn two, you're exactly right. Looks like Jimmy Johnson's really running through the middle of the racetrack. He's giving Jeff Gordon a good look. But as we know from the last race, it's awful hard once you get that bumper up and underneath these car of tomorrow's to push him out of the way or to turn him. So I think Jeff's got to get a good deep run on him, and maybe we'll see both of these guys get turned around, and it'll change the whole point scheme. 
We've got to have some fun. What do you think, Susan? You know, you've got the two drivers, drivers and friends, but then we're looking at Rick Hendrick, and he looks like he's going to have a heart attack <laughs> out there. But this is a great situation for an owner. You've got your top two guys right there going at it again. It's all about taking the trophy home. I'm telling you what, we can be friends later. Doc? Yeah. Yeah, Rick Hendrick trying to make sure, oh my gosh, what's going to happen here? And if you're Ryan Newman, you're sitting back there and say, okay, you guys uh, go ahead and take each other out and I'll win this race. I really had one one in two years and I'd love to have it. Doc, absolutely. That's what I was just getting ready to say. Ryan Newman's sitting there hoping these guys are going to beat each other. He hammered the rear bumpers because we do know one thing. Jeff Gordon will do that to his teammate. We saw that last time here. I'm not sure if he'll spin him out or wreck him. I think he's going to do what it takes for him to win, though. I think he's going to, if he gets a look, he's going to take it. Back back in the spring, it was not a championship at stake. This time, there is a championship in the wings. Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. Gordon came in with a 68-point lead. It is 58 right now over the car. He's trails at Jimmy Johnson. Folks, buckle up those seat belts. Ten laps to go when they take the green flag at Martinsville, Virginia. It's like the old times here, folks. That'll be a shootout short track style. Here they come. Here comes Gordon on the inside. Johnson's just got to block this bottom lane. Remember, there was an oil dry on the bottom of turn one and two. Probably not much grip down there. Look at Ryan Newman. He is not letting these guys get away. Pulls right to the rear of the 24 car. Johnson got a good restart that time. Cleared Gordon by a couple car lengths. And take a look at Newman looking inside of the 24. He might get a bumper to his left rear quarter panel and rough up the 24 a little bit. Rattle his cage like Dale Sr. used to say. That's definitely helping Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy's just going, you guys stay racing. Nine laps to go. Just keep hitting your marks. That's what Jimmy's thinking. Got to get it right. Behind this battle, the 17 car trying to take the spot away from Earnhardt Jr. Kids are trying to get his best run here since 2002. It's a good recover for Jr., a fellow who thought he was out of the race with engine problems. He's back in. Look at Ryan Newman moves him up the track a little bit, and he's going for second. Jimmy Johnson is loving this. He said, you guys stay side by side, push and shove each other, and I'll just cruise these final seven laps and pick up three in a row here at Martinsville. Ryan Jim Newman being very aggressive right there. He ran Jeff Gordon all the way up the hill. I'd be surprised if Gordon doesn't return the favor here. And Andy, if I was Jimmy Johnson up there leading that race, and I saw these two racing, I'd be loving it. He's just checking out right now on him. Here comes the 17 car, the five car. They're going to move in on Jeff Gordon. And who said putting two tires on the 12 car would be a bad move? It's turned out to be great for him right now in second place. And the 17 car also got only two tires in that last stop. And Kenseth hanging on, hanging tough here. Andy, we talked about how the car tomorrow uses the right side tires, not the left side much, and it's working for these guys. Definitely working for Ryan Newman. This sure did change the whole complexion of this race, this restart, because I thought Jeff Gordon had something for Jimmy Johnson, but it sure changed. Five laps to go. Jimmy Johnson trying to be a little trouble up behind him, coming out of the corner there in turn two. Kyle Petty Caution's and Caution's out. Caution's out. Watch for debris there, bud. There's four cars spun back there. One car, Martin Truex involved. There were a couple of cars in front of them that spun around. Bobby Labonte missing the back part of his Dodge. Laughing in the breeze there. Bobby was having such a good run. And you guys believe this. Four races in a row make it five now that we keep having these cautions. These drivers are feeling a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure to get it done. Get the points. You've heard of the twilight zone. We talk about the red zone in college football inside the 20 yard line when every single play is critical. This is the chase zone, the final laps of each chase race where it gets really wild. Let's show you what happened here. We just set a record for caution flags, by the way. 20th caution flag of the day. Bobby Labonte around, a cloud of smoke. Nobody can see, everybody's piling up in the smoke. Folks, when you're running close to 100 miles an hour and you crash like this with no vision, you're going to hit hard. Tony, Tony Raines. Tony Raines gets into the back of the 43 car. Spins it around. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't let him. Come on. Robbie Gordon trying to help Bobby Labonte by peeling that bumper away. He said, I'm getting up there. Give me one more shot here. I don't have Can't hands. get it off there. I don't believe he's going to have, have any luck getting that off. I think it's held on too good. Bobby's going to have to come down pit road here and get that thing pulled off. Yeah, it's not going to hurt him right now either. It looks like uh, Andy, he's in a... 23rd position Bobby is and Kyle Petty is the last fellow on the lead lap so if Bobby pits it's not going to hurt him whatsoever in fact he's probably going to have to or else get black flagged by NASCAR Bobby going to try to pull up behind Dale Jarrett so he can get on the pit road 
get that service done without losing a lap. Leaders already at the start finish line as Bobby gets on the pit road. He's going to have to hustle. And how hungry is Ryan Newman sitting in the second position right now, right behind the leader, Jimmy Johnson. He knows he's back in the game. Rear tires cleaned off. Wiggle that car back and forth like he's doing right now. Get all that debris off the tires so we can have a good, clean restart and just get away from Ryan Newman. This will be the sixth green-white checkered finish of 2007, but folks, the first ever at historic Martinsville Speedway, a track that's been uh, race, running races for 60 years. How about that for a first? And oh, by the way, a record for caution flags today. 20 caution flags for 123 laps. Not going away, Bob. Ah, the mall parking lot's been awful busy here today, folks. We told you that. They're still chasing <laughs> that last spot. <laughs> All right, we'll see what's going to happen here. It's going to be green-white checkered. Ryan Newman has not won a race since New Hampshire, September 2005. Down in the turn one with all that buildup, you turn the wheel and it just slides up the racetrack with no grip. And if you don't get it off the rear tires, as soon as you pick up the throttle on the restart, it'll just sit there and spin the tires and not go anywhere. So you got to get the front tires cleaned off, the back tires cleaned off, and that's a job. It's not easy. You see a lot of black smoke coming out of that eight car. That must be some of his problems that he's been talking about with that engine. You see some of the uh, some black smoke coming out the exhaust pipe. All right, Andy, you're in the 48 car. What do you tell your driver? Man, there's not much you can tell him right here. It's all it's all driver from here. Some room because a 12 car, if he can get there, folks, there might be a little bit of contact. Short track style. Here they come. Green flag, white flag, checkered flag. Can Jimmy Johnson hang on? Here comes Gordon. Single file as the green flag waves. Look at the five car. Kyle Busch is there. And Newman is right on the bumper. Jimmy Johnson pulls him now by two car lengths. White flag this time. White flag this time. Six car, bottom of the racetrack. Twelve car, right on the rear of the. It's sideways in the middle of the track. They're wide open. Now the caution flags out. Race is over. That's it, right there. And uh, the boy Chad Canal says, "I can't believe we got a caution flag." Guys, that was an unbelievable race, and we saw the caution flags all day long, late in the race. And they were coming wide open in turn one with that six car sitting dead sideways in the middle of the track. NASCAR rules are you get one attempt at a green-white checker, and if the caution comes out, the race is over. They st stop scoring them right there. And the caution and the checkered flag. And right now, Kyle Busch is being scored in the third position. So scoring's probably going to go back and check this one more time, but unbelievable finish. Kyle Busch waving to his teammate. Greg Biffle, there's Jeff Gordon going by, and the celebration begins. Now watch Chad Knauss' reaction. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Let's go down to Mike Massaro. And for the third race in a row here at the Marksville Speedway, the 48 team in victory lane. It looked like there were some tense moments for you down the stretch, though. Yeah, and, you know, I think that we had the best car here today. Jimmy obviously drove the wheels off the car. It was, I just, all those darn cautions, you know, it was, it was aggravating. But uh, turned out okay. It was a good, uh, good day for us, the whole Lowe's team. And, you know, considering it's happened to us good and bad on this weekend over the years, this is a nice way to end this weekend. What were your thoughts on that final restart with, with Ryan Newman right on your rear bumper? Oh, we knew it was going to be tough. Ryan's really good on new tires anywhere we go. Uh, he's a great short run driver. I mean, he's just on restarts, qualifying, whatever it is, he's the man. And uh, we were nervous about it, but uh, we also knew that Jimmy's pretty good, too. Certainly prove that tonight, Doc. Another victory for Jimmy Johnson here in Martinsville. Jimmy Johnson, what a burnout and what a finish here. He grabbed the flag while doing the burnout, and Jimmy Johnson becomes the first driver to win three in a row at this tough track since Rusty Wallace did it in 1994 and the spring of 95. Isn't that cool? The man was doing a burnout, still burning the rear tires, didn't let up the throttle, pulls up while the rear tire spinning, grabs the checker flag, and keeps burning the tire. Man, you talk about some smoke. There was so much smoke from that burnout, we couldn't see out of the booth. That was crazy up here. These guys talking back and forth. Ryan Newman talking about, I was, yeah, what a great race here as the 24th car. Let's get on to Jamie Little. 
Ryan Newman now getting some Gatorade. Jeff Gordon just walked up. What was the word exchange there, Ryan? Uh, we were just exploring when we were mad at each other. But uh, And why was that? Well, I, I, um, I gave him a little tap, did the same thing he did to Jimmy uh, at the first race here, and got him up out of the way. And then I went into the next corner here down into one, and I locked the left front a little bit and got up into his door, pushed him up, and thankfully uh, I saved it when he came back and retaliated. So I understand why he was upset, but uh, I didn't do it on purpose, and it's just hard Martinsville racing. A good run for the Alto Dodge here today. Uh, thank Michael Nelson, everybody at Penske. Uh, Penske Racing, Penske Jasper Engines, uh, almost uh, getting tired of these second-place finishes, but uh, it's a heck of a lot better than where we've been finishing sometimes. Great run for Ryan Newman, mixing it up there. Alan Messwick? With Jeff Gordon talking to his crew next to the car and uh, cooling down. Jeff, thoughts on third place in the hard racing there at the end of the day? Yeah, it didn't, didn't wind up quite the way uh, we wanted to. Uh, I mean, third place is great compared to where we were at one point at the race, but I just mean uh, long green flag runs. You know, this DuPont Chevrolet was great on the long runs. We showed that all day, and, you know, we just didn't need all those cautions and short runs, but it's pretty typical here at Martinsville. So, uh, you know, I, I I just, I just couldn't get going on the restarts and get real loose getting in, and that's unfortunately why we end up losing second as well. Um, still a good point to say for us. Jimmy was tough. You know, congratulations to him, and I, I really didn't have anything for him. I'm uh, checking the video on what? Uh, checking the video on your actual finishing position, I guess, where you were in relation to that car when the, when the, when the field was frozen and that final caution came out. Nonetheless, uh, the four races to go now, championship lead should still be yours. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, we, we did what we need to do. You know, you, you could have come out of here with, uh, you know, a torn up race car and a bad finish. So Jimmy was strong, we were strong, and, um, you know, he, he got the best of us there at the end. So now we go to Atlanta, you know, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Jeff. Let's go to Victory Lane. And Jimmy Johnson now being given the cue to get out of the race car and celebrate here in Victory Lane. His team is gathered around somewhere behind us here. Most everyone's had a chance to congratulate him. Car owner Rick Hendrick has been in there. He's gotten a kiss from Shannon, his lovely wife. And now he jumps down to drink in what was another win here at Martinsville, Jimmy. Uh, just a, a great day of racing. Um, and at the end, it always works out that way here for a good short track race. Uh, green, white, checkered, or you know, some type of shootout at the end. And that's really not my strong suit, so I was happy to hang on to that. I'm usually better on the long run here, and uh, we were able to hang on to it. I think we had a great car. Um, certainly went up there and got the win today. It's something I'm very proud of. And it's hard to not come to Martinsville this weekend and not think of all of our friends on, five, uh, on 501RH. And uh, so we want to dedicate this to them. Your crew chief deflected all credit to the car, crew chief, and team. He said it was all you today. Um, yeah, it takes good equipment. It certainly does. But when you're racing the 24, we know we have the same stuff. Um, and, and, and the 12 was there, you know, digging hard, too. And it was really about uh, kind of one of the most at the end there. And had a good car. And I'm not going to sit here and boast about my abilities in the car. But I think I did a good job today. And, and uh, certainly proud of what I did. Well, that's number four. So where does that put you uh, getting, catching up to your friend now? Uh, yeah, I guess in wins. And, uh, you know, it's good for the points today. Uh, I was happy to see the 12 get in there. But, um, you know, this thing isn't over yet. And this team's certainly strong enough. Uh, to be a champion once again. I have to give a shout out to all the employee owners at Lowe's and thank them for all their support. I hope to get them all to New York again this year. Jimmy Johnson, the reigning champion, looking like he's got uh, eyes on the championship again, guys. Well, he moves a little bit closer because of this win, his 30th career victory, 7th of 2007. And it was official, by the way, Jeff Gordon did finish third, Kyle Busch fourth. After the uh, video review, Jeff Gordon now has a 53-point lead over Jimmy Johnson. Clint Boyer back 115 points. Tony Stewart back in fourth. And there is the point standings all the way down to Matt Kenza in 12th position. Speaking of Clint Boyer, let's hear from him with Alan Bestwick. Third place driver in points today winds up 115 out at the end of the day here. Clint, uh, you fought that all day. I know they're still checking some of the final finishing positions, but a top 10 run for you. Yeah, you know, I mean, I was happy uh, we salvaged top 10. We weren't a top 10 car, and we battled back there at the end and made some good adjustments and, you know, got it decent. Just just kind of fought uh, you will handle the race car. I really thought after practice we was going to have a pretty good car, but uh, it's wasn't our day. Um, you know, this is one of my best racetracks. Still a 10th is our ninth or whatever we got is... It's a decent day for us here. I know, uh, you know, these tracks to come are, are I'm excited about. I think it'll be good for us. Thank you, Clint. Dave? Under Rick Hendrick watched his guys race to the end here, and Jeff's the acknowledged master here, but what do you think of the up-and-coming Jimmy Johnson? I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a, heck of a show of a lot of talent there, and, uh, you know, Jeff is awful hard to beat here, but Jimmy has won a lot of races in his short period of time at this track, and... Uh, you know, he did an awesome job today. 
So it's uh, this one's special. This place has always got a special place in our hearts. All those folks we lost and uh, hard to come back in one way. And it's one of the first races my dad ever brought me to. So it's 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 special. Lasting. What more do you need?